tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tipful Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Juicy Johnny, Johnny Woodard, Bang Bang Pow. Hey. Let's go. Great episode today. Absolutely great episode today. Uh, we have the one, the only, Isaac Wysett back to talk Ooh. about uh, this Netflix movie that's driving everybody crazy leave the world behind this is an excellent episode this is a banger of bangers and uh if you if you haven't seen the movie i would suggest you see the movie we talk a lot about the movie here but it's a great movie uh real quick we want to get into it uh just go to samtribly.com not a lot of shows left for this year we have something in west hills and that's the end okay um uh tomorrow night friday night and then uh, the following month, January 11th, Tim Fall Hat Comedy and Swarm Tank with Eddie Bravo, Xavier Guerrero is at the, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, then Pottstown, PA. And then guess what? Xavier and I go to Pittsburgh and we're doing one show on that is on the 13th. And then Batavia at the end of the month. Uh, check out samtriplee.com. Check out our affiliates. Check out the Chaos Twins. Anything else, guys? Uh, we don't smoke the same. Just had Hibbler and it was hot. It was fire. Him and Ezone got in a little ultra, not altercation, but they got into it. So go check out. We don't smoke the same with Hibbler. That is so hilariously awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, enjoy this episode of with Isaac Weisip. Then we have two more episodes after, and then we're done. Enjoy the episode. Deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. All right, let's get into our returning champion. He is on the Mount Crushmore, uh, and it's happy to have him back. I don't even know what what appearance this is, but I think it's him and Eddie Bravo, the, the two most appearances on the show. Welcome back. As always, happy to have him. Isaac Weissip. How are you, Isaac? Hey, what's up? This is my favorite show here. This is my 14th appearance. I keep, Ooh, I keep nice. track. I keep record. Um, <laughs> and, nice. uh, man, I'm so happy to talk to you guys. I got so much to go through today. I, there's no way we're going to get through it all, but, um, I want to hit some big talking points, um, with this movie, leave the world behind. Um, but I, I'm stoked to talk to you guys. Thank you. Well, Isaac, uh, you have been on 14 times and every one of them are like, uh, smash it out of the park. Awesome. For those who may not be familiar with your past appearances, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name, my pseudonym, not a real name, is Isaac Weisop. I've been researching the occult and the Illuminati since 2011 when I started my blog, IlluminatiWatcher.com. It's been a long, windy journey. You can read about it on my Start Here page. And uh, in 2014, I started a podcast. At the time, it was called Conspiracy Theories and Unpopular Culture. And over the years, I shifted the titles when, to me, it's clear the writing's on the wall for a big agenda coming down the pike and I'm, yeah. I try to get ahead of it a little bit and change the title to occult symbolism in pop culture around, I don't know, 2021. I think I did. Um, but yeah, I've been doing this a long time and, uh, you know, you know, Joe Rogan was the guy that inspired me to pop. I was thinking about this the other day about where did I start? Why did I start podcasting in 2014? And I had a friend who me and him talked about Joe Rogan experience all the time. And, um, yeah, he was one of my influences. And I think, man, that's, that's dope that he got me sort of, got the ball rolling because back then there was there was a variety of things happening and uh it seemed clear that i had to set something else up and sure enough i was right you know all this censorship hit me in a variety of platforms and uh yeah it's been it's been a wild journey and like you said I, i've done tinfoil hat many times and in fact today we're going to reference uh we did a show about the uh the john carpenter film they live about yeah two years ago and uh, we're going to reference that today, and I'm, I'm just going to pull out a couple highlights when we when we get to that part. 
Um, but but today I want to talk about this film because it's very instrumental. It also went sort of viral with people talking about it, and rightfully so, because there, there's a few main points we got to talk about. It's 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 predictive programming and symbolism on one level. Then there's this elite control over our world and how they are stoking a civil war in a way. Yes. And it gets into, you know, Aldous Huxley, Julian Huxley, Agenda 2030, Doomsday Bunkers. And this is where where John Carpenter's They Live comes in because he had a message for us in They Live. And we're going to we're going to cover that. And it's about these globalists um, projecting this new reality, this new world order and, and aliens being a part of that as an instrument. And then there's also this theme of human sacrifice that's involved uh, and that's in the symbolism of the film. So we'll, we'll kind of go through all that a little bit here and there. Yeah. I, I I'm very excited that you're on when, um, you know, we decided to, um, get you on to talk about it. Cause everybody is talking about this movie. You know, a lot of people come on with either movies they made or they want to discuss the movie. And very rarely do I actually watch the movie. Cause I kind of want to come into it open-minded to, to just, you know, have them explain to me their view of this movie. But last night I decided after I watched uh, the Pandaverse on South Park and then Great. they're Put and some then chicken on and make on, it fucking gay. OK. And then they then they did one on OnlyFans. That was so hilarious. And so so I'm like, OK, I got to stop doing that. I'm going to watch this movie for a little while. And I watched it and. I'm going to be honest with you, dude. And I was, uh, who was I talking to? Oh, I was talking to my buddy, Mike Romanelli. And I, I was like, man, the minute this movie started, it had the weirdest energy I've ever felt in the movie. Like maybe because when I go watch horror films, I'm, I'm, ex I, I'm, I'm geared and, and tuned into that. But this movie from the moment it started had weird energy and, and, it's almost gets into that thing where they talk about Hertz and frequencies of music and how, how like certain frequencies irritate you. Mm. And, uh, they, you know, like there's a higher frequency that makes you feel better. Lower frequency. This movie's frequency out the gate made me extremely uncomfortable. My anxiety shot up right out the gate. Maybe that had to do with the, everyone tell me about this is end of the world stuff. And maybe, my body was gearing up for that, but I'm telling you, man, out the gate, this movie had weird juju, weird energy, and it's a weird movie. It's like there's nothing normal about this movie. It's it's a completely utter different texture, endings, all that stuff is just weird. It's it, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I mean, if you want to watch everybody, uh, go for it. It's it just understand. It's like it is. If it's I got weird. a question for you. If it wasn't if it wasn't for it being a topic on the show, would you have even finished it? Would you have maybe started it and then said, ah, this is too much. This isn't I can't sit there as a conspiracy theorist to watch it or No, I, I wouldn't have. And I have very short, limited tolerance for movies that I think have bad bad intentions, in my humble opinion. You would not have finished it, is that what you're saying? No, I would be like, uh, it takes a lot for me I... not to, to to stop a movie. It takes a lot for me to just say I'm not finishing this. Well, I also feel like the only reason I watched this movie is because everybody was talking about it. Mm. And that we I knew we were going to have Isaac on to talk about it. So I was like, okay, I got to watch this movie. But I mean, I really question why I have Netflix anymore. And part of me wants to get rid of Netflix. But I understand that if I do that, I'm just going to become completely detached from society and anything that is blowing up pop culture wise, which is not good for my comedy career because you got to reference a lot of these fucking things to, uh, yeah. to be relevant into what's going on. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, caught, man. I mean, this, I don't want to say this movie shook me, but it, like I was, I was like survival kit scrolling on everything. And so it's, it's just interesting. Isaac, what huh. was your thoughts? Yeah, it, it definitely stokes uh, anxiety. It had a very Hitchcockian feel to yes. it. I don't know if that's a word. Um, and I, I enjoyed it as as a suspense movie. I watched yeah. it the day after it came out. I just happened to be uh, having some free time and didn't want to sort of watch the things that I have to watch for work. Um, you know, this podcast podcast that I do. 
And I kicked it on because I thought, okay, this would be something, you know, it's trending number one or whatever. And, and you know, right off the bat, I'm like, oh, crap, I got to take notes on this movie now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that it, I, I enjoyed it. It's really long, though. It's two and a half hours, which is way too yeah. long for a movie, I think. But they did a good job of keeping it moving. Um, that, but that's just me from an entertainment standpoint. From the conspiracy theory standpoint, I feel like... They're showing us they're they're laying um they're planting seeds into the subconscious. But to to be fair, we could argue that maybe it's a warning of what things could turn into if we don't sort of get our act together and all um sort of get along, I guess, in a way, is is one another way you could look at it. And, and you know, Netflix is an interest you, you bring up Netflix, Sam, and I'm I'm curious your take because I go back and forth on Netflix because, you know, it has that connection to uh, Edward Bernays, which is, you know, the king of propaganda. And then you also have a lot of, you know, the woke stuff, which, you know, I get it. I get people. Nobody wants to be told or uh, nobody wants a show telling their kids what to think or parents how to parent their kids. Like, I get it, you know, um, but th- but then they've got. But then on the other hand, I think, well, you know, Netflix is great for free speech in a way because they let all these stand up comics on here and you really can't find great stand up comedy on many other platforms. Uh, Like I know they're going to have Dave Chappelle back on again. I think this New Year's Day, they released a new Dave Chappelle stand up and, you know, he's been in trouble for saying all the things. uh, Well, Ricky Gervais' new special is the clip they put that Netflix put out was a rape joke. Dude, no kidding. dude, that's this. That's the way I saw him working out at the Hollywood. He worked out at the Hollywood Bowl, by the way. He those are his workout dates. He just did all like arenas and, but that that was the set that I saw him do. And it, dude, it goes hard, hard. I mean, he went. By the way, hard. he started on time. Like he's the only thing I've ever seen in L.A. Because you know everybody knows L.A. crowds. They don't get there on time. Like by the time we were in our seats, he was five minutes into his set, and like half the crowd wasn't there. He was just like on time it's so unusual did anyone but, yeah. open for him no dude it's just that's what i was thinking i was like oh we're, we're fine you know there's gonna be somebody opening it's just ladies and gentlemen ricky gervais and he walks out to mid stage and just shreds through it at the hollywood bowl crazy but yeah it's it's it goes it there it is man. interesting because he opens up with a rape joke and it is a very funny rape joke and i'm like this is interesting dude this is an interesting yeah. Push, you know, there's a lot going on with Netflix. Uh, so just literally right now, uh, somebody pointed out that Coco Melon, uh, which is a giant uh, child's programming. When I say child, I, I'm like, I'm talking about like infant to early toddlers. Like that's the demographic for Coco Melon. Like your daughter's now, already over it. Your daughter, it's yeah, not your they're daughter's way thing? past Coco okay. Melon. Okay. Coco Melon is for like the real, 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 like when they just start to clock and and pay attention to things. That's what Coco Melon's for, in my humble opinion, based on having children, and the 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 things that they have in Coco Melon. Gay dads, uh, one of the babies dressing up like a girl, and when you realize the demographic, you go, why is this necessary? I just like. So that's where we start getting to what Netflix does, which is programming. And there is something about Netflix with free speech, but it's all in terms of comedy. But it is very much, again, the the the, the they, they they kind of got lost for a long time to the point that they were doing such woke comedy that it was hurting their brand. They're like. And now it's kind of come back a little bit because they were losing viewers. They were, people were unsubscribing and they're kind of doing this thing where it's like, okay, okay, we get it. We get it here. Here's some, here's some kind of edgy shit for you to enjoy, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, the Disney claims they're going to do the same thing. The question is, the question is, would they allow a young comedian to say some really fucked up shit? Like, no and it gets into something I talk about on Union of the Unwanted and stuff like that. It is called, it's something I call safe dangerous versus dangerous dangerous. And most of your mainstream content creators who are seen as edgy and I love them and a lot of them are my friends are doing safe dangerous shit. It's socially acceptable to talk about the dangerous dangerous shit. I wonder if they would allow an unknown or young com- comic to go up there and say that shit. 
It's like those huge conspiracy podcasts. They do, uh, they do uh, the moon landing. They do yeah. the safe e- dangers. Yeah, safe dangers. And they'll tell you they like do a... the safe dangers because they don't want to get, you know, it's like. The sense. thing the I people... wonder, though, Sam, is the dangerous, dangerous stuff you're talking about. Is that, is that marketable? Like, I know my family, that's not for them. You know, they're more conservative people. Not because they don't agree with those things, but just because it's not their taste. But, you know what I mean? I understand that. But if you, like, my big issue right now with the tech lords is, like, they they very rarely let anybody through. Like, very rarely. Well, I'm just talking about Netflix, like, what they choose to I mean, put you on have, there. I mean, you have Nick Mullen from Cometown. He just got a million views on his, his, um, so crazy. his special, which is a good sign. You know, if you play little games, you play the game, you dance the dance, they'll give you some love, I guess. How many you know, people so, do you think listen to that podcast? It's got to be a, it's a ton, right? Yeah, yeah it was a big podcast. It I was mean, do you think a million podcast. people listen to that podcast, possibly? 500,000, no. something like that? But I, the people who are the tastemakers in comedy all, all all suggested, so we got a lot of love. I, I didn't see him do the podcast tour that most people do, but he's super funny and he's very smart in how he operates, but you know, very rarely do I, do does anyone get through at all, the super edgy guys. But then you take a look at like somebody like when you go back to like even like like cable when cable ruled, right? People like Doug Stanhope, David Tell, they would sneak through. So it, yeah. it, is early Doug Stanhope for Johnny's parents? No, but they were still allowed because they had street cred. And it, it made the it made Showtime look good to put out a Doug Stanhope special. It made with the who's who of comedy they respected that game. Tech people aren't like that. Like Instagram is just pushing the stupid right now. Well, they just like, care about numbers. That's all they care about. Lowest common denominator. Like what? Well, yeah, the, but that's the yeah. only thing they're allowing to get lowest common. That's the only thing they're allowing to be seen. Like when I got my Instagram back, I was getting five million views in thirty days putting out reaction videos and then they just bang. They're like, Nope, 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 Nope. What do come on? Come on, Sammy. What are we doing here? And now I'm down to 200,000, which is shocking. And it's, it's just crazy. It won't even let me do reaction videos anymore on Instagram. So yeah. What do you, so what it's do you interesting. mean? It won't let you do those side by side things. Yeah, I can't. I can't find it. it won't let me I know do they. It. I know. I read somewhere that they were struggling with people like taking copyrighted stuff, and they they got fearful of that. But that's crazy. They won't let you even do it. That's. I mean, what the hell, guys? Real quick, I want to tell you about our favorite people ever, Blue Chew. That's right, Blue Chew, American made for American boners. Let me tell you about Blue Chew. Blue Chew is unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost, okay? You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or whenever an opportunity arises because when she says it's go time, you better go and take no time, okay? You can take them anytime, anywhere. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So there's no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA. USA. And prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Bang. Or with a marching van, fireworks, bald eagles who are rock hard flying around, singing the praises that someone's about to go to. Pound town. Everyone's loving pound town. Yeah, let's go. So here's what we need you to do. Blue Chew wants to help you have an have better sex discover your options at bluechew.com chew it and do it and we got special we got a special deal for our listeners try bluechew for free when you use the promo code tinfoil at checkout just pay five dollars that's bluechew.com promo code tinfoil to receive your first month free visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank bluechew for sponsoring this podcast blue chew enjoy so well zuckerberg so, is one of those uh zuckerberg is one of these guys who since this movie came out now people are talking about the elites building doomsday bunkers and mark zuckerberg hit 
the news dropped that he has one uh, built out there in Hawaii. So these these elites are prepping for wow. the end days, civil war, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I think I think it's to the tune of two hundred million dollars. Is his doomsday bunker in Hawaii? Hawaii, but what if I mean, how do you get to Hawaii in a doomsday situation? You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? That's kind of crazy, right? Well, maybe they have advanced notice, right? Like yeah. maybe he's going to yeah. get the memo yeah, the and only, say, "Hey, it's the only explanation." Right, so yeah, if you ever see him you build yeah. it out there, right? So if you ever see him in Hawaii, you better get fucking ready. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. dude. Yeah. So back to the movie. Where do you want to start? Uh, so I just thought we could start at the beginning, and I'll kind of pace it. We can kind of get through the big talking points. I can't, I can't hit every single piece of symbolism, uh, but but we can we can try to hit the big talking points if that's cool. Yeah, for sure. I'm okay. I'm excited. All right. So so we're gonna start out. Let's talk about there. So briefly, there is some strange uh, symbolism when we talk about the ideas of synchro mysticism or a twilight language, um, which we're talking about Matthew Perry, right? Matthew Perry died on October 28th on the, on the, under the hunter's moon. And, and he died very mysteriously with, with all these weird postings right before he died about Batman and cranberry. Yeah, Batman some symbolism because like somebody put out all the deaths associated with Batman. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and with the Batman thing, um, man, hang on. I got I got a note on here. I got to find it. There's okay. uh, the, the Dark Knight Rises, the Batman movie, the Dark Knight Rises. That was, you know, in, infamously the one where they they shot the, the homeboy shot the theater up. Right. And um, Hans Zimmer did a track on that called Rise. And of course, the film is called Dark Knight Rises. And that back in the day when those things were happening, I remember on my blog, I was covering a lot of themes of charles manson helter skelter and provoking a civil war an apocalyptic civil war back then for years i kept seeing because i'm very much into the charles manson stuff I, I i've been uh i've read a lot of books about it and you know the, the quick version is when when they were murdering the folks like at the tate and the la bianca home at the la bianca home they wrote in blood the word rise and it was based on Charles, supposedly, if, it depends on who you believe, right? Bugliosi came up with this theory that Tom O'Neill kind of dis, dis, uh, yeah. punched holes Tom in Tom O'Neill lit up that, that detective. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, um, you know, supposedly Charles Manson had this interpretation from the Book of Revelation about a race war that he had heard through the Beatles' White Album and there was a track on there called blackbird that talks about how uh it's time to rise and charles manson thought oh this is a reference to black people rising up against the white people and and creating the civil war race war in america at which point manson said he would be uh he would he would show up at the end to help the black people beat the white people and then he would be the new leader <laughs> it's pretty wild stuff and the there was all this weird symbolism over the years of the word rise, you know, um, the dark Knight rises, uh, Beyonce had a song called rise up and she did the super bowl appearance where she was wearing the black Panthers imagery, um, back in, I think 2016 or 17. And that plays also into the theory because, uh, Charles Manson also, they used, they made a bloody paw print on the, the La Bianca home to make it look like it was the black Panthers, um, you, you, you've got a variety of musical tracks from the, the Glee soundtrack, David Guetta, Selena Gomez, Katy Perry. They all had tracks called Rise over the last 10 years. What? Um, yeah, it, it, it just goes on and on. And and like at the 51st Super Bowl, that was the Falcons against the Patriots. And the, uh, the hashtag for that was Rise Up, if you recall. And that was the Super Bowl where they tried to pit it as a political ideology war of the Patriots who were, you know, team Donald Trump and then the Falcons who were, you know, I don't know, team anti Donald Trump. Uh, but but you can see over the years they've been planning, planting this symbolism um, of what appears to be some kind of some kind of race war or something. So anyway, going back to Matthew Perry, the days before he died, he was posting all this weird stuff about Batman and calling himself Matman and all this kind of weird, bizarre behavior. And. What the reason I bring it into this movie is because Julia Roberts plays, uh, you know, one of the main characters, and her she used to date Matthew Perry, 
but her birthday was is October 28th, which is the day that Matthew Perry died. Now, is any of this proof of some kind of nefarious plot? I don't know, but it's it sure feeds into that twilight language idea of and this goes into the ideas of occult ritual magic where practitioners of magic on earth think that they can sort of project energy out of the universe and have it reconfigure the world into their will and 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 actually i, I ironically i just watched willy wonka the new wonka movie the twink twink wonka whatever they're calling it yeah um, twink wonka. <laughs> they're calling it the twink wonka i watched it the other day and um I actually didn't take my notes. I'm trying to relax. I'm trying to stop being so neurotic because I, when I go to see a movie, I'll take a pen and paper and I'll write notes in the theater. <laughs> oh, and <man>. I, <laughs> I didn't take my pen and pad, but there's all this symbolism where he, he flat out says that he's a magician and he signs this Faustian bargain in a way. Um, but anyways, you, you see the symbolism all the time. Once you once you know to look for it, you you see it everywhere, and and it fits into this predictive programming model, where there's a belief that you can manifest this reality through entertainment. And Bill Maher said this several years ago. He told he said it straight up on on because I've watched real time with Bill Maher. I don't think I've missed an episode in hell since it started fifteen yeah, years now. Same. And, yeah, because he's an interesting guy. Like sometimes, sometimes I'm with him, and sometimes I'm not. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. And, but I, I think and, he's true to himself, unlike most people who have shows like that. He, he's just yeah. misinformed on half the issues. But oh, he's so <laughs> yeah. Well, like when he gets it right, he gets it right. When he gets it wrong, he is so wrong. But you'd say that about uh, a bunch of people. Like I really love Candace Owens, but man, when I when she gets wrong, I think she just swings and misses. And you know, I you could probably say that about me too, but I I agree with Candace Owens ninety nine percent of the time. Alex Jones, I'll agree with Alex Jones ninety five to ninety nine percent of the time. He definitely has some uh, blind spots, and that becomes apparent more and more today during the the discord going on with everybody. But yeah, man, I mean, like, yeah, Bill Maher's got a lot right, and he just a uh, He's just an old school liberal that can't get away from seeing Democrats versus Republicans. He's so stuck in that paradigm yeah. and he doesn't understand that it's like one party at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, he, he did get it right on. He said many years ago, he said he didn't know what he was talking about. He didn't know it was called predictive programming, but he said, Hey, do you want to see what's going to happen 20 years from now? Watch movies because they show you what's going to happen. And I don't remember the example he was using, but, but that seems to be the way it goes. Um, and you see, no, you're totally of- right, Isaac. Yeah. And like, you know, for me, I talk about this all the time. I'm like, I'm like, everything is an occult manifest trick. They're just yeah, that's what this is all about. That's what, and that's what the news is about. It's a, they they funnel energy through through funding and resources to manifest the reality they want to live in. You know, you know, and I'm watching. Um, I watched this clip about uh the the ceo of blackrock steven schwartzman who was you know uh crapping all over people who remote work and he flat out tells you he flat out tells it to your face he says look these people aren't spending enough money on the economy they're staying home they're making their own lunches they're not doing dry cleaning and he's like we got to get them back into work because they own all this commercial real estate and that's another problem with telework yeah commercial real estate and that dude um he's from yale skull and bones and it's like he's flat out telling you what what's going on here like the elites have a different world they're trying to manifest and create dude so so this thing happens in colorado where this colorado supreme court says that trump is not eligible to run for for the uh, the presidential election do you know that the day that comes out is 322 days before the election no way that's and wild. Was that under the Fourteenth Amendment, right? Is yeah, that what they said. Yeah. Which is yeah, what? I don't even I know mean, what that means. Yeah, it's, what it, it, but it's it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I think the Fourteenth Amendment wasn't. I, I could be wrong, but I think it's the Let's one where a is. president is mentally incapable of mm-hmm. of uh, doing it or something like that. Something but about not being born here. Many aspects of citizenship and rights yeah. of citizens. Let's see. Uh, what is the Fourteenth? Uh, section one is all 
persons born or naturalized in the U.S. and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and a state wherein they reside. Let me see. let me skip to president. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, that, that's for me. That's for wetbacks. Representatives shall be a portion among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state, uh, excluding Indians not taxed. But when the right to uh, vote at any election for the choice of electors for president and vice president of the United States, representatives in Congress, I don't, I don't know what would be. I haven't, I've, I'm yet to see something relevant to. Well, could it be that? Did you see that the Jeffrey Epstein co-conspirator list is going to drop on January first? Maybe this is part of a way of di distracting. One hundred percent. This is all about. But I don't even know what. The, oh, I'm what, sorry. Here it is. I this is this is definitely it right here. Uh, no person shall be senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the U.S. or under any state who have, pre who have having previously taken an oath as a member of any of those things, uh, engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. So January sixth. Yep, we're gonna try to. Put but January the only exception on is if Congress, uh, by a two-thirds vote, uh, removes that disability, as they put it here. Well, it's interesting because Donald Trump. Remember when he was running, they kept calling him the chaos candidate, and I think that when you when you get into the realm of the occult and some of these big hitters like Steve Bannon, who they they subscribe to this different ideas of, um. You know, I did six or seven episodes on the Great Reset, and some of the I read some of the books that they base it on, like Klaus Schwab's books, and uh, there was a book in the '90s called Gener um, Generations, and in that book they talk about the different cycles of uh, mankind and the different sort of I don't know aspects of that we rotate through, and they and apparently they were pretty on the spot, on the nose. I think they even predicted a uh, like 2001 would be a year where we would have a cataclysm cataclysmic change or whatever you say and there the the idea is that steve bannon is into this stuff traditionalism and this idea of ushering in a new cycle a new age and could it be that this is ritual theater that donald trump is the chaos candidate not because um you know i think i think donald trump does his own thing i don't think he's necessarily um part of a master plan but i do think they use him and maybe steer him in a direction that benefits higher you know illuminati plans or something like that and he is a jesuit right his kids all went to jesuit schools and you know it's it's yeah. just interesting dude because like he keeps getting all these cases but does anything actually stick like yeah, that's why it feels like a ritual theater like like yeah like this colorado thing they're they, they're actually they they passed it through now so that they can Trump can have enough time to appeal to the Supreme Court, which obviously he's going to do, and obviously he's going to win. I mean, it, it's all 100%. this way of just stoking us into this, you know, getting people all upset, and it just fits right into the theme of the movie. The theme of the movie is a civil war, and I think that when they were calling Trump the chaos candidate all those years ago, they knew this was the start of trying to sort of unwind, and I don't know if it, the goal is to break down the American empire necessarily, but maybe that has to be part of the plan for their new world order ideas like that. That's that's always the underlying theme of all conspiracy, right? Is this new globalist, new world order, Luciferian government or, or whatever they're trying to take us into. And, uh, you know, all, all these strange things that are in the movie have been manifesting even since the movie released, like. For people who don't know, and we're going to drop some plots. Spoiler spoilers. alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Here we go. Yeah, I, guys, if you haven't watched the movie yet, sorry, Johnny, did I blow your ears out? Sorry. No, um, no, no. I'm in. I'm, I'm covering my ears for spoilers. Okay. Uh, there are going to be some spoilers. I won't give out the plot, but it's pretty obvious. But there are some spoiler alerts to this. So just know that maybe before you listen, you should go watch the movie. I can watch a movie if I know what's going on, but just so you know. Okay, and, and I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it vague so that we won't spoil it hard. Um, but the plot line is about uh, um, enemy threats, like hacking our American infrastructure, and then from that, society sort of collapses and people start turning on each other eventually. That's kind of the idea. And after the film released, 
the next day on the news, there was this big article from uh, one of the intelligence agencies about how Chinese hackers have been attacking the U.S. cyber yep. systems for a yep. long time. And and then and also since this movie released, we heard about Zuckerberg's Hawaii Doomsday Bunker. And since the film's release, we've got the trailer to a new Alex Garland film called Civil War about an American civil war. I don't know if you've seen the trailer. Dude, I that. sent that to Sam. I don't, did Sam, did you ever watch that? Oh my! Yeah, God. I did. I mean, that's crazy. That yeah, and disturbing. it's so weird how they break up the United States. Like it's yeah, in the pocket. It makes no sense. Yeah. And yeah. like Cal, I guess California's trying to secede, which makes no sense. And mm -mm. I mean, well, there has been talk about like Cascadia and the West seceding, but they aren't going to be the ones attacking DC if if that. Happens. I mean, they're just going to be like, leave us alone, and you know, let us uh, tax everybody at fifty percent. So in, in in the movie, it's it's supposed to be a civil war, even though there was like uh, flyers flying around from another country. No, 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 no. That th there's a movie called Civil War, and then no, no, I know that, that, but I'm talking about in this one. Did we establish that in in the movie with Julia Roberts? Is, is that a civil war, or was well, that that's that's I, a hack? I think right. The end of the movie, the very end, alludes to that somewhat. Yeah, because because they said there was a three point plan to destroy any government. And that three point plan involved, you know, some kind of cyber attack to shut down the, you know, electronics, the news, all those things. And, and, and I'm oversimplifying and paraphrasing here, but after you do that, after so long, people will eventually turn on each other because people aren't prepared for, you know, doomsday prepper type <laughs> environment. And, um, that, that kind of is how the, the thing collapses. People will collapse it on their own is the idea and um, that, that's kind of what they show you in the movie. And there was something else I was, oh, they live. Yeah, that's right. The movie, they live. That's what, um, that's what exactly that film was showing us. Uh, John Carpenter's film from the eighties. It's, it's showing us what happens when these alien loving globalists like Ronald Reagan uh, established what they were trying to do. Uh, and, and let's briefly go through. They live. And, this, and like I said, we did a we did a tinfoil hat back in 2020 or 21, I think, about they live. Um, and and you'll and before I forget in in this movie, leave the world behind. You see the one the boy wearing a shirt that says obey from that yeah. iconic logo. And and that's what fits into they live. That's why that's what ties us in, because in the movie, they live. There's all these hidden phrases and one of them is obey and that's where the artist who created that design got it from and he also then went on to work for the obama hope poster which obama Shepard is very right yes yeah. which uh obama is the executive producer of this film which we can yeah cover which is too. which is super interesting he made this yeah. right by the way shepherd fairy this thing right here that's a, oh really it's a, okay. yeah george harrison print very rare one of five one of 500 in the 400 wow. In the oh wow. fun facts you're welcome fun facts with johnny's that's great. Johnny's well, childhood bedroom. The uh, <laughs> from it's not it's over there. So ah. the sh the short version of they live, and, and we're gonna we're gonna in, in a couple sentences we'll go over what it is. Um, about it's a they show us a hacker trying to red pill the masses on TV, and this repressive society that we're living in, and the elites annihilating our consciousness with all the subliminal programming, right? And you can hear, and and then you know, Rowdy Rowdy Piper gets those glasses, and he can see that they're sort of aliens living amongst us, controlling us. And he hears one of the aliens giving a speech that by the year twenty twenty five, the humans are going to be under the thumb, under the power of the elites and the multi dimensional um, uh, elitists to make the wealthy richer. Like they're like the aliens are working with the wealthy to. I don't know, control us or something like that. But ultimately, John Carpenter was making a movie critiquing um, Ronald Reagan and the uh, and, and and some of the uh, capitalism things that he was doing in the 80s and changing the tax codes and all that stuff. And his whole critique was wasn't really about capitalism it was about unrestrained capitalism. Um, and and it's interesting because Ronald Reagan was very much an occultist. He saw UFOs and he followed astrology. He had um, a psychic in his White House. Yeah, just like uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth had John D working for her to do astrology and and readings for her. And um, he was into Manly P. Hall. And and Ronald Reagan, he was a globalist. He was a member of the United World Federalists, who were their specific 
goal was to create a global worldwide government. And Manly P. Hall was an occultist that influenced Reagan through a book he wrote called The Secret Destiny of America. And the whole idea is, and it's like Francis Bacon's New Atlantis book, the idea is that America has this divine plan. They think there's a, 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 a destiny for us. This is more than just an experiment with democracy or, or whatever. They, they, these occultists believe that there is a, a future world that we are going to set up um, through these mystery schools, and we're going to establish the global government. And, and Ronald Reagan was pushing for that. Um, so it's interesting to see that referenced by, you know, this Obama produced film. And and I don't know, you know, is Obama white hat, black hat? I don't know. You could argue either point with me. I I, I dude, I, don't really know. I, I he's a black hat. I think so. I mean, he's an he's a Bush. I mean, it's not even it's it's so interesting because we were having this discussion yesterday on the Union of the Unwanted about whether Trump was a a, a good guy or a bad guy, and I think they're all crime bosses. So it's like. Sopranos like is he a good guy or is he a bad guy well if you live in the neighborhood it's it's pretty safe because nobody wants to fuck with the neighborhood of a uh of a crime boss so in that aspect you're probably like oh it's good if you look back at Vegas or the music industry a lot of people say it was better when it was ran by organized crime so there's an argument about that yeah uh, but it, yeah and and I I was on the fence about it because when I first watched this movie I thought Maybe this is showing us what it could look like if we don't get along and sort of it's share uh, resources if something like this happens. Like maybe it's a warning film and saying maybe it's Obama as a white hat saying, <laughs> "Look, guys, I've been on the inside. I know what they're going to plan for us. So here's your warning. This is your 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 shot." Okay, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our friends at Fume and their innovative award nominated device cold turkey may be great on a sandwich okay but there are better ways to break your bad habits we're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or some crazy spiritual mumbo jumbo from hot chicks on tiktok okay we're talking about our sponsor fume and they let they look at the problem in a different way not everything in a bad habit is wrong so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Okay, Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is na completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and making replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes in an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for your fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you're breaking your habit. Okay. I love it. I love it. it's well-weighted, perfectly balanced, extremely fun to fidget with. It's made of real wood. And the shapes are insane. It feels cool using it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard. But switching the fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of successful stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's break up with destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today try fume.com and use code tinfoil to save 10 percent off when you get the journey pack today okay try fume fum.com and use the code tinfoil for additional 10 percent off your, your journey pack today enjoy there's some sayings in there there's a line in there that i found very interesting and i i don't know how how soon you want to get into that but it's like about who runs the world do you remember this line i don't who says it do you remember when the oh, who's the black actor what is his name oh i don't remember either. mahershala ali right mahershala ali he's supposed to be yeah, played yeah. right yeah it's him yeah yeah it's him yeah, it's yeah. him, yeah, it's him. So he's talking to Julia Roberts, and there's all this, like, of course, there's got to be that interracial. Um, oh, they're like almost gonna, yeah, where they're almost gonna everything. bone, yeah, they're almost gonna um, bone when they're playing music. 
but he's having the conversation with with uh Julia Roberts and he explains some stuff that one of his clients has told him. That's and right. do you remember that? And mm-hmm. I found that probably to be one of the biggest things because if the Obamas are running this, is this is this an inside scoop of what's really going on, or is this kind of misinformation? I see, and and I think so. So I've come to believe that that Obama's a, a black hat with this film because the thing that swayed me was digging into one of the artists who performs. Uh, Joey Badass performs in the opening credits a song called Revenge. And we'll talk about that in one second. But let me let me talk about this this part of the movie you're you're referring to, where let me see if I got um the guy's name is George, that Ali guy. His name is George, and he's talking to Amanda, who's Julia Roberts, and he's talking about how he he he's a, a I don't know if a fixer or something. He he works with finances with rich folks, and he talks about this this sort of very famous guy, who goes to annual meetings with an evil cabal during the winter solstice and this same guy is the one who warned him sort of by moving his own money before the cyber attack so he was in on it he knew he knew it was going to happen and it's interesting that he references the uh the ritualistic element of a winter solstice and the evil cabal which you know makes you think about all these all these organizations the skull and bones bohemian grove uh council of foreign relations all those all those folks well now um, that you mention it he probably did know something because in the movie remember that they don't go to the hotel because he can't go up some flights of stairs that was their that was the reasoning of why they went back to the house that they air beat and beat to this family yeah yeah that's right yeah he said it was like they're on the 14th floor or something but but it's maybe it's because he, he knew and because he knew you, yeah because he knew he knew if he would have stayed there that he probably he that he not that he knew, but he had a prediction, and then he knew this is probably what they were talking about. Yeah, and and at the end, he's talking to uh, Ethan Hawke's character, and he said when they're in the car, um, I don't want to spoil plots here, so I don't think we're going to. But jo- he says to he says to Ethan Hawke, he's like, I need to know if you're on the level, and that's when he lays out this whole plan that he knows about for how to topple a world government. And when he says on the level, that's a Freemason term. You know, that's that's something the term the Freemasons came bro. up with, right? Like the, the, the square and uh, it's compass and square. It's 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 a it's a term they use to check each other. They, they checked Kanye West. Um, he was on Sway, one of Sway shows. I don't remember when. Back in like 2014, when the when 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 Kanye was originally doing his first supposed rants back in the day, when people yep. first started saying there's something wrong with Kanye. Um. It was either Sway or Charlemagne. Maybe it was Charlemagne. It, it was Sway. It was Sway. They got in a huge argument about it, and he tells them, "Hey, brother, I'm I'm not coming at you like that." And they have an argument, but it's over about who owns the country, the Jews and stuff. Yeah, and and someone checks him and says he's not being he's not on his level, and uh, there's all this weird sort of uh, you know hidden, hidden language that they use. Um, but but can we switch gears and talk about the Joey Badass thing? Because that's actually really intriguing. To oh, me. the opening song. Yeah. It's a good I, song. I fast forwarded through it, but it's like one of those songs you could work out to. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm not a huge Joey Badass fan, so I didn't. I actually didn't know it was him singing it. I didn't know anything about the guy, and I was listening to. Uh, I, I followed Dona on Instagram, and I and he he talked about this movie, and he talked about that song and Joey Badass, and about how in the song on the opening credits he has lyrics about the Illuminati, about joining the Illuminati. And I thought, okay, let me look into this guy a little bit. So I watched the uh, the video for this track, Revenge, where he does talk about how he's joined the Illuminati and he's got demons around him and all this stuff. But what's disturbing, the reason why I think the movie and Obama went black hat on us here is because in the video, Joey Badass, he's in a church, an actual church, and he looks possessed and he pulls out a gun and he shoots and murders somebody in the church. And then they show a bunch of hooded figures in the church, like a ritualistic idea oh thing. Oh my god! And and he's having sex with this this hot chick. I don't know if that's in the church or not. I can't tell. He's on a bed. Uh, but either way, he he murders somebody in a church. And while he's doing all this, he's wearing these um he's wearing three symbols, the same symbol three times on his uh, lapels and on a, a necklace of the cross of Leviathan. Now that cross of Leviathan symbol is used by the Church of Satan. And it was, it goes back to the Knights Templar and, um, 
you know, it's supposed to, it's supposed to, because, you know, all these Satanists and occultists, they always, they always have a spin. They're like, well, no, it's not like a good versus evil. This is like just a different perspective. And they say, well, it's, it's supposed to mean that man is the center of truth, not God. So it's, you know, it's a very anti-religious sentiment. Right. For um, sure. But anyways, the, 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 the video is very demonic in that sense. And I'm not one to be easily offended, but I thought, geez, I mean, that's that's pretty excessive. What about the rap church. group Three Six Mafia? It's like right there, Three yeah. Six, Three Sixes, mm-hmm. yeah. and like nobody, like nobody ever went. Hold up, what? Yeah. I think they, I think, I just think nobody cared back then. It wasn't yeah, I really. Don't think, I I don't think anyone saw this rise of like a dark occult in hip hop happening, and now it just seems. Maybe because I do the show. Seems everywhere now. Oh, no, it's it, bad. Have you seen Doja Cat's new stuff? Doja Cat's on a sick one. She's like a demon in her videos. And she, uh, there was a breakdown that she had at one of her concerts. And she's not good. Yeah, well, she's she, channeling. She, 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 did that, she did that Lilith thing, right? Where she was Lilith, like Scarlet. referencing True Blood. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't see the I didn't see the True Blood reference, but she's she, when she's she's all channeling. in blood like that. It's it, it's Lilith oh, from True Blood. Okay. If you see it, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and and she does that as this alter ego she's calling Scarlet, which is a reference to the Scarlet Woman. And again, we're watching ritual theater happen before our eyes. It's it's yeah. continual showing of the apocalypse and the end times because I think they're trying to actually usher this in. I think they're trying to end this world so that I don't know what they think they can rebuild it from scratch with their new globalist plans. But Doja Cat also speaking of Matthew Perry, um, her only image she had on her I think it was TikTok account was a um before matthew perry died was her on the couch as a demon for the opening credits of friends and oh said, yeah i saw that yeah that? so demons instead of friends oh like, yeah 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 it's like crazy dude. stuff yeah and and, and so 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 like i get into this thing where it's like because you know when um who's the who's the gay rapper what's his name um that had the blood Lil shoe Nas x yeah Lil Nas x so it was coming out that he's doing all this satanic stuff. And and of course, there was the, the black Twitter pushing back that calling him on this stuff was super racist. And I go, I can understand your argument about that. But re- in reality, like when when it was coming out before, you didn't see like Black Sabbath being sponsored by you know, Jamba Juice when they did this stuff, you know, or it's not that it wasn't mainstream because these big bands were doing it, but it wasn't corporate sponsored and shoot in everywhere. And that's the biggest difference to me. Eventually when Metallica comes around, you start seeing it more and more, becomes more and more mainstream, but there wasn't this like corporate signing off on it that made it so obvious what was happening. They weren't getting like, you know, Satanists weren't getting deals with Nike and, and, and you know Macy's and all this stuff that was going on. So that's to me the biggest difference between back then and now. How how completely and utterly like like acceptable. Like you could see Doge Cat singing this song in that style on the Tonight Show. You know, which like in the past I don't know if that would have happened as much. I agree with you totally. And and I've been I've been following uh, the hip hop satanic angle for a while and. There's much more today than there was 10 years ago. Um, people like uh, Lil Uzi Vert, whose name is Lucifer, like he flat out, he flat out tells people they're going to hell. And there's all these theories about, I heard a good one the other day, a theory about how <laughs> they, uh, one theory is, you you probably heard of the theory that they, they spin a master record and imprint some kind of a magical spell on it and then from that master they make copies well i've heard a new one that was saying they murder people and they record the audio from it and then they have a producer chop that audio up of screaming and crying or whatever and they chop it into to uh oh. beats and and i kind of thought that was like wacky christian crazy conspiracy talk but then i looked up um drill Jake music Cole. Yeah, J. Cole sampled a song that used a beat that had someone murdered on it. And J. Cole was like, look, I, I had no idea. And and to be fair, like I, I might believe J. Cole, maybe, I don't know. And um that's one of the theories going around is that they're 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 doing this stuff. And and I don't 
I don't dismiss that. I do think that there's probably something going on in this unseen realm in the same way that I don't dismiss, you know, people give women all this crap about following astrology. And I, sorry, like, I don't, I don't study astrology. I don't really know much about it, but I do believe that you could have, um, you know, planetary shifts that cause changes on earth. You know, you can get a, you can get a sunburn from the sun. That's how many, I don't know how many miles away the sun is. It's really far away. So there are planetary effects that can happen to us. Mm. And you see, ironically, you also see that in this film as well. They keep showing you planetary uh, cosmological changes happening out in space. They show, it starts out with an eclipse. It shows towards the end, it shows you an eclipse from the moon, from the moon's perspective, they show the black sun and, and that in alchemy, that's ushering the first stage of change. They're showing us what they call the negredo. It's the black sun. And it's saying, and to me, it's what the film is saying is this is the beginning of a new shift. And and you see this in a million movies. So it's hard to think that, like, oh, this is the one that's going to do it. But I think that if they saturate this symbolism and this idea enough into our environment, that they're going to manifest the change they want. Much like you see all these rappers going ultra satanic, showing us bloody pentagrams going back to you know asap rocky bone thugs and harmony three six mafia playboy cardi all these rappers do it and i think it's because they're normalizing it and also soaking our sort of unconscious realm with this symbolism which is it's a concept that you can find when you dig into the sort of uh deep esoteric stuff like eliphas levy talked about this with the magnetic chain it's 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 this exact theory that you can basically charge up these energy sigils and um i don't know it, it gets really dark really quick yeah when you it does get, but when that's what they stuff. do man that that is it like like we we've talked about this a thousand times on the show i mean it's like these kids have no clue what they're chanting they're singing these songs like i like i I went and looked up that song we just talked about from Joey Badass, and I'm like, am I going to be listening to some chanting going on? And what is that going to, while I'm working out, is that going to be higher vibration, lower vibration? Like, you have to watch what you consume. Like, well, going back to my the, the energy of this movie, it was very, very off. Like, yeah, not that, not that it wasn't slick, but the energy it was putting out was anxiety-ridden. It was nagging. It was Julia Roberts' voice. She was nagging was from the beginning. Nagging. It was just like, <laughs> man, I felt like doom was coming. I felt the anxiety of doom. It was really weird with the, uh, you know, the XG was was joking about Julia Roberts, but it's true. And her husband, Ethan Hawke, I don't know why he was he was such a cuck. Even at the a end, cuck, he was like, yeah, he was like, oh, I'm not a, I'm a worthless man. I was like, bro, what are we watching here? This is so bizarre. And even in the movie, there's a scene where uh, Julia Roberts damn near sleeps with the dude, um, you know, George. Anyway, is it? It is a strange, it, it has a lot of strange elements to it. And I think that's why so many people are talking about this movie. Um, but Joey Badass, one more thing is he had a, he used to talk about, he had lyrics in his early career about how he would never sell his soul to the devil. And then a few years later, he did a video called The Light. And in The Light, he attends an actual Haitian voodoo ritual and he filmed it. And after this is when he started pushing all this satanic stuff, like in the, the the video for revenge where he's in a church murdering people i i don't know people think that it's all just a shtick and i think uh, i don't think it's a shtick i mean why do they they keep going back to the same well constantly in fact i just i'm putting the finishing touches on a show i'm releasing this week about roseanne Barr. um there was a clip going around of her on the, uh, i don't know the tonight show one of those tonight shows where she says she sold her soul to the devil and i dug into it and i bought her book from 2011 called Ro rose anarchy and the whole book, I'm not even exaggerating. The whole book is her trying to find repentance for when she was 12 years old. And she said she literally sold her soul to the devil at 12 years old to be Roseanne. Wow. Yes. And, 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 you, and you read that chapter and you think, okay, well, people say this stuff. They're just being weird. You know, Dave Grohl said it in his yeah. Bible too. Yeah. And let me ask you, you some. Yeah. Yeah. When you read that book about Roseanne, did it tell you like what kind of background she's from? Yeah. Yeah, it did. It it talked about how she's she's from Salt Lake, ironically, in my backyard here. She was Jewish. Yeah. 
and and she hung out and um you know because from what i understand i didn't grow up in utah but my wife did um there is a culture here it's you know predominantly lds here and my wife growing up not being lds there's I don't know if you, I don't know if being shunned is the right term, but you definitely feel it. You don't feel like you're part of the group. And in her book, she talks about how she would attend LDS church, even though she was Jewish, just to try to fit in, I guess. Um, and but she is a, she poor? Was she poor? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. It's interesting because, she, you know, she made her bones on being like white trash. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. like this very much this Kid Rock type of thing, right? Where you ever listen to Kid Rock's parents? They like bust his balls all the time because yeah. they like they obviously did enjoy him going straight out the trailer. You know, it's like, dude, you're from the trailer park, <laughs> right? Yes. And, I, and like, yes. I always thought about that. Was like, and maybe I'm just wrong because we see it happen all the time. It's like, you know, it's like you know me going around saying Ice Cube is Larry the Cable Guy of hip hop, <laughs> but I do mean that. I mean, like these these this is what happens. And this is what Hollywood does. It co-ops movements. And and we've gotten to the point where we're tired of rich kids playing these LARPing characters. Where it's, it's like Roseanne presented herself as white trash when she wasn't. Hmm. And There's it's just... the same thing with Ice Cube. He, she present, he presented himself as a gangbanger. And he wasn't. And we get into this. And this is why I've always been like, you know, it's like everybody loves Roseanne right now. And I, I like a lot of stuff she's saying, but like, yeah, she's pretty she funny. really good at discovering trends and jumping into them. She, um, she said in her book, I'm trying to think back if, the, if she talked about coming in with wealth it was her sister or her cousin that landed a commercial when Roseanne was 12 and she was so jealous of her. That's why she summoned the devil. And then, you know, in the book later on, she, she, she doesn't stop talking about it. The whole book, she talks about the shame she has and she visits a Kabbalistic um, priest who started the Kabbalah center in LA. Uh, I forget his name. And he, she tells him like, Hey, like I sold my soul to the devil forever ago. And like, I'm worried about it. And he, and he says something pretty revealing. He says, well, did you do it on Shabbat? Which, uh, you know, that's a Jewish term. I should look that up. But I, I think it's a Saturday, I, I'm thinking. And um, she's, she says, yeah, I did. And he goes, oh, well, you're good. Like, the devil can't appear on Shabbat. You're good to go. And I think that's what it is. I think a lot of these people who are in the Kabbalah, they sell their souls on Shabbat because they think they found this technicality to get out from the system. And then, um, I don't know, it's just bizarre. And then later, and at the end of the book, again, she revisits again and says she summoned Lucifer and he appeared as what? her husband. Yes, it's it's insane. And now she's making the rounds on Tucker Carlson, who he yeah, wears the I red mean, string Kabbalah dude, bracelet. She, like, she, she might be way smarter than we all think. Everybody thinks she's a crazy person for what she's saying, but she may, again, be playing a role. Like she may be a chameleon. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty funny. She said she made a deal with the devil and said, um, part of the deal was she wants to have all the sex that she wants and still be, uh, you know, a heavy set woman and eat all the food she wants to eat. It was pretty funny. At, at 12. She said that. Yeah. She was, she was a heavy set, uh, young girl back then. And she was always getting grief about her weight back then even. But then she was at 12 asking for all the sex she could get. That's interesting. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that is interesting. That's pretty young to be thinking like that, huh? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I was very sexually active, very young, and it was very damaging to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And But it's interesting that, I mean, but I don't remember being consumed with it, like, like enough to sell my soul and ask for a ton of action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is, it is, it is interesting. Yeah. But, but okay. I, do, I, I do think that they are, you know, to zoom back out, I think this movie and a lot of these themes, they're just showing us the end of a current age and trying to sort of warm us up to the idea of the collapse of the empire and ushering in this new age, which is going to have a Luciferian uh, global government of sorts. And, and to, to fit this back into they live, 
you know, and they live, they talk about the alien presence in 2025. And, you know, Ronald Reagan was the guy back in the 80s who said, we need to find proof of aliens so we could all, you know, band together. And that fits into his, um, that uh, United Federalist global government thing he was into. But in um, 2017, I wrote a book called The Dark Path and I cited the NASA chief scientist who she said, we were going to prove the, the existence of aliens by the year 2025, which all these things are lining up. You know, they're all lining up to, I think, sort of unveil some kind of thing, you know, and uh, David Grush, he recently did Joe Rogan's show, and um, he says a lot of interesting stuff. If you listen to what he says, he he can't flat out tell us certain truths, or you could argue he's a disinformation agent. I don't know. Could be. He's it's an intelligence super agent. super interesting. If you go back to Alistair Crowley, so yeah, we had yeah. this Freemason guy on, and of course, everyone's like, this is a Freemason. What the hell? You know, Robert and Sullivan. it's just like, I get it. You know, mm-hmm. was, was it him? I'm trying to find, let me find. I've had, I've had him do my show and I've got a lot of, a lot of people saying, what the hell you got this? Oh, yeah, the Mason third or Robert like, Sullivan, the fourth or some, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And he came on, he said some interesting things and yeah. I thought it was an interesting conversation and he brought up, he brought up that Elser Crowley talked about two things he said when you start to see the people who worship the world on fire which is climate change and trans basically gender fluidity that this the the uh, fan, uh this uh they all see horus the uh, re, a horse would be returning and he also said that um that angels and demons would be coming back but they would be referred to in a- another title. They would be referred to by another name. And that, and he said that made it, he, he felt that that was aliens. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems to be the common theme. And that's what uh, Jack Parsons, when he was doing his work, channeling the, the, uh, the whore of Babylon to again, bring about the end of the uh, age he talked about UFOs being the symbol of Crowley's Aeon of Horus, which was his new age. He talked about ushering in. And I mean, the more things progress, the more I think, Oh God, I, I kind of think these, these <laughs> wacky occult dudes really did something out well, there. Uh, I'm, I was watching this, uh, this uh, YouTube video and she was talking about how back in the day, you know how like the Holy spirit showed up and you thought Jesus showed up. That's because they thought, of the world like that that ufos doesn't exist so no, they're you're totally those, right so they're saying the people that saw the holy spirit or the light of jesus was actually could have been a ufo but since we don't believe in jesus much in this in america we look no at i'll it, go even farther than that we've had guys come on the paranoid american and talk about people see what they see is based on their belief in religion mm-hmm. so if you're an atheist you see aliens yeah Right. If you're right. super religious, you see God. If you're a cultist, you see ghosts or demons. You know. So it's like, which yeah. that really resonates with me. And and there's science on that. There's um Jeffrey Zachs is a uh, neuroscientist. He wrote a paper I read about cognitive models, and I use that for some of my theories I presented in my two alien books I wrote in twenty twenty one. I think. Anyway, um, the idea was that you know our minds they're just they're just um, comp- to oversimplify them, they're kind of computer systems and they're kind of programmed by social constructs and everything. And when it watches a movie, it, your brain doesn't know that what you're watching on the TV isn't real. It, it thinks it's real, but then you have all these sort of faculties that, that interfere with the program and say, well, wait a minute, you're just watching that on a TV. That's not real. But mm. it still builds a, what they call a cognitive model in there. So when you watch a film with aliens ufos whatever that gets stored in your brain as a model and then it requires others yes. there and say hey that's not real you saw that on the movies yes and how and much brain- of that is us not us not being afraid is because we know it's a film in the moment because you hear about these early screenings of films you know like the train coming mm-hmm. at people and people freaking out you know thinking like oh shit we gotta get out of here uh, right. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think we've probably learned uh, uh, to a degree to kind of repress that, uh, you know, even further. And and to to 
take it back to this movie and Obama, you know, Obama, he, he and Michelle started the higher ground productions company. And that's the production company they used for this film. And his next, um, that was, and this is his first fictional work, I believe. And his next, um, film he's doing is a movie about Betty and Barney Hill called oh, wow. White mountains. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're the first abductees, uh, you know, interracial couple in New Hampshire, and um i've read that they have this story of being abducted and some people believe that it's real some people believe that the details of the story they gave were the same as an episode of i think it was outer limits that they had just watched so some people say that no that was a cognitive model Hmm. i don't know it's also strange i I don't know where to go with all that but it is interesting that obama is now going to be working on you know after watching this civil war movie now they're working on the uh you know the alien angle which there's there's uh, a lot of efforts to sort of normalize and accept alien existence in our world including in in um in this netflix movie leave the world behind there's a scene uh where there's a doomsday bunker and you see artwork of newspaper rock it's a, a rock with petroglyphs in utah and ancient alien theorists think that that was etched in by the uh the native americans who were seeing actual alien visitations and they were trying to draw it on this as petroglyphs on this rock so the again i i think that the alien agenda is tied into all of this i think that they're trying to usher in some kind of idea of a luciferian world government in in short i found it interesting that everybody thinks ethan hawk is a cuck in this video in this movie and there is he some is he is. But I also believe that she, um, that that it is a it's it's kind of a statement on modern day relationships, and the, the what feminism has done to women, and because Julia Roberts is the most Karen of Karens in this movie, she's the most Karen of Karens, and her decision-making causes great chaos in this movie. Well, wait, in wait, so wait. many different ways. But th- doesn't it save them, technically? Her, some, remember- some, at some places, it does. In some places, it... it oh, I guess you're right. Like, by getting out of the... Yeah, because she's... Yeah, she, she wakes up saying... She wakes up saying, hey, we're leaving. I already booked the flight. I'm not going to ask questions. We're not, we're not going to plan it. We're going. And then he's kind of like, all right, whatever you say. And then they dip. And then that's when it starts going out. The internet goes out. And I, I was going to ask if it, the world was going to sh- hit, uh, hit the fan, you think it would be just like that where the phone would go out first. We think it's going to come back. We're waiting it out. Then we see a uh, shipping cargo hit the beach and then we're like, oh, shit. Do you think it would be progressively or do you think we would instantly know like, yo, this is it. The internet's not coming back. I'm not watching Friends because for some reason, Friends was such a big part of the movie. Well, you oh. know what, dude? I, I really do believe that there, you know, there's a discussion on is Elon Musk the Antichrist? And I really do believe that they are that they're a part of this neural link is the, the part of this internet going out is him being able to go, Oh, I got neural link. You can all have the internet now again. I've saved you all. Oh, and, Starlink satellites too. Huh? Yeah, Star yeah, Starlink. That's why I'm at Starlink. Oh, oh okay. Oh, you know remember when the starlight thing wouldn't work or the satellite the phone one as well yeah like huh, that to me he's like because you know there's a lot about elon musk right now that goes oh he's trying to be a savior save everybody free speech you know all oh, the internet's gonna go up but hey we have these satellites you can give everybody the internet oh you saved us elon you say, hey, but, this. but he did let Alex Jones back on X. We got to Come on. He's been doing some good. And he told, and he told those companies to go fuck themselves. Come on, Johnny, have my I'm back. That's like, pretty funny. Yeah. So, I, I so, don't, I mean, I think he, I think he does some things to pay a price for doing other things. I, I, I do think he's, he's going, he's doing what he wants to do mostly. I mean, I don't think that, you know, I think he has the, he knows how to play ball with those people. Cause you don't become, you know, a billionaire, yeah. a mul- you know, the richest man in the world. Well, if I mean, you believe that, that. Your, your parents were Emerald dealers. No, but what I'm and... saying is you don't become that without owing the, the people at the very top. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. But I think he, he knows also... how to play with those people and can also 
get something's happened in it because you know if you read I, I started reading isaacson's book about him his dad i mean he he endured a lot of abuse as a kid uh you know and i think that kind of formed his worldview you know the abuse he endured uh, uh, physical abuse you know it's like he got his ass beat a lot at school his father was terrible so i i think uh, yeah i think there's something to that yeah he hates his dad from what i understand yeah. Yeah. but they're, his dad they're was kind of two but they're kind of similar guys. Like, they, yeah. Oh, he, dude, you hear about like the abuse he does to his employees. You know, he's yeah, he's a jobsian he, type for sure. Neither one of them uh, could pull out of a garage. Man, they got like twenty kids each. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, but e Elon, he he was on the news for this movie too because there's a scene where these Teslas, because there's no you know yeah. internet or whatever, they start crashing. You know. And Elon didn't like that, obviously, because he's like, "Why you? Why you gotta pick on me? Make me look bad?" And then, come on, he they kind of had to like it. Either how many? How many did they buy to crash? Can't be that mad. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then a day later, two days later, it's all over the news. Tesla recalls two Recall. million cars yeah. for autopilot issues. I mean, it it makes you wonder: is that a humiliation ritual? Is Elon part Ooh, of this thing? Wow, I, I, I did not see that. Yeah, it's also very strange. The whole movie is bizarre. I think. I think Sam, you're right, dude. There's there's something very, I don't know, unnerving about the whole movie. Yeah, really, it's just really it's is. it's it's anxiety driven. So so they wake up, they get out of town. What? What? Well, I'm gonna let you talk through the movie as much as you want, and we'll we'll listen and we'll jump in when we can. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Uh, yeah. So so when it starts out, um. Let me let me go back to the beginning of my notes here. It starts out and it shows you right off the bat the co the cosmology of the sun tracking over the earth and that's telling us the you know the the idea of humanity evolving in cycles and timing it with astrology and all these things, right? It's a um if you get into a lot of the the occult side of the great reset, that's that's kind of where that stuff goes. Um I think they're trying to facilitate a collapse of society to go in alignment with these cyclical ages or something like that right is what it seems like then we're you know we're introduced to the main characters uh ethan hawk and julia roberts character and the room is absurdly blue it's very strangely blue and um some symbolism you, you can catch in this scene there's three sixes there's his cup he's got a 76ers coffee mug and his clock is set to six something and then her clock on her nightstand is set to six something, but all you see is the sixes, right? So, oh my gosh! So, <laughs> so you got the three sixes. My, my, hey, my listeners found that. I got, I got to shout out my Patreon listeners. They're the ones that told me about that. Um, and then, you know, and then a lot of people were pointing out the similarities of the blue to the the uh, Maui fires. Remember the Maui fires that happened, and people were saying how there were blue umbrellas that were unaffected, and there were debunked conspiracy theories about oprah's roof being blue and all these you know obama even having a blue roof and because they knew they could dodge the the laser uh, i don't know it gets deep into some some wild stuff there but they they pack it up to go to this airbnb and on the opening credits again you've got that joey badass song that we talked about but you'll see a lot of symbols floated throughout the opening credits and all the symbols are inverted and and that's what this is all about. It's about the inversion and the flipping of reality on its head to prepare us for a new world. Um, one, and you'll see an all-seeing, a big all-seeing eye on the credits. Um, you also, I noticed there was a bull on the opening credits. And I don't recall there being a bull in the entire movie, but every other symbol they use is in the movie, right? Like, uh, I can't think of the other ones they have. But on the credits, all the stuff has a role in the movie, but there's a bull. And... The bull, of course, made me think of Moloch, who was the 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 bull god they would sacrifice yeah. children to. Um, and on the tinfoil hat social medias, I saw you guys were, were the first ones that I saw it on. There was the, the movie poster. If you highlight the letters in a row, it says B A A L. You know, Ba oh. mm -hmm. is the same sort of god of child sacrifice. And you know, to I, I guess we could we could let's talk about that for a minute. The the child sacrifice thing. Because when when the family they they pack up in the car after the credits they they're in the car the daughter's watching Friends on her iPad the son he's sitting next to her you you'll notice he has black and white checkered shorts which is again symbolism of Freemasonry oh man you know the Moses pavement that you see on the floor of all the lodges well, I'll, I'll real quick 
Yeah. I just want everybody to know if you've done anything in television, any, you know, I granted I've done like one movie, I had a TV show. Every moment of everything on the screen has been combed through. Mm -hmm. Nothing, in my humble opinion, nothing gets by on accident. If it does get by, it's probably done so people talk about it. That's my humble opinion. I agree. I, I totally think it's all planned out for, for a reason. How people is dress, it everything is wardrobe. Okay, yeah, I like the, yeah, put the, we want them to wear these pants, do that, so... Everything is done on purpose. Yeah, and it's not just on set either. You got to think. I mean, they pour over it in post production, editing every yep. frame. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's no way that thing those things get through. Like, like they that get roast in Game of Thrones. Yeah, they get roasted. No for way that. that wasn't on purpose. Oh wait up! You don't. You, you, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was on purpose. I was about to say. Yeah, like, yeah. People, well, people that believe saying, they they did it for publicity. Absolutely. Yeah. The Starbucks so talk cup. about it. Yeah. 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 At first, I thought like like Johnny said. At first, I thought it was an accident. But when you think about it, there's no way that was a play. It's Game of Thrones, dude. Like, how many people watch yeah. that before you release something like that? Totally. Yeah. The only show I can imagine that happening on is like South Park, where they have, you know, they're just turning it around so fast. I can see them having some mistakes, but it seems like they never do. So. Yeah, that's interesting with the Starbucks thing. Uh, it will, and there's a scene where they, you know, after they get to their Airbnb, um, they're checking in and we hear Julia Roberts' character talk about how the password for the Wi-Fi is novella. Now, it sounds like she says a novella, which I kind of think she does say, but when you put on the captions, it's literally just the, the word novella. And that makes me think of Eyes Wide Shut because Eyes Wide Shut, you know, it's a movie about perverted elites having sex orgy ritual things. And that's based upon the book Dream Novella. Uh, Kubrick was obsessed with this book since he was young. Arthur Schnitzer wrote it. He was an old pervert. He used to, uh, he used to, he, he kept a, a journal of every time he would jack off. He kept a journal of it. Like he was a weirdo. Who did this? <laughs> Arthur there's not Schnitzler. enough paper in the world, yeah. buddy. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. That's more than a journal. So. <laughs> but um, anyway, she says novella. And, and, you know, I'm, I've, I've obsessed over eyes wide shut for so many years that I was like, oh, that makes me think of dream novella. And then you hear another song. And it's cool in the gang's um, uh, misled, right? You ever heard that song, misled? And synchronistically, not even, I don't know, less than six months ago, somebody somewhere, I tried to track down the comment or the message. Somebody somewhere told me to watch the video for misled. And I watched it, you know, months before this movie came out. And on the video, this guy, he's chasing around this woman like she's some kind of spirit, but his all the bandmates and cool in the gang they they turn out to be wearing eyes wide shut masks and cloaks so there's i don't know there was this weird sort of double reference to eyes wide shut but that to me points to the idea of these elites um coordinating a lot of things behind the scenes just like eyes wide shut shows us so they um they get to the airbnb and they they go out to the beach and they um they see they witness this large oil tanker sort of crash onto the beach and it's called the white lion i think officially the the reference is to a um it's the uh a ship that brought african slaves to virginia in 1619 uh because later on in the show in the movie they ethan hawk's radio is set to 1619 and and that would make the most sense cuz there's a lot of racial elements of the movie yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> But the lions could also be the lion's gate, which is the 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 um, alignment of Sirius in the sky that actually happened the day of the Maui fires on August eighth, I think it was of twenty twenty three, um, because Sirius is very important to the occultists. That's why the yep. Freemasons have it in every Freemason lodge. They call it the Blazing Star, and you see it in a million ways in Aleister Crowley. I mean, we could go on for an hour or two about Sirius itself, but the point is. Um, you you see this this boat the white lion crash and they make a whole to go to you know johnny talking about game of thrones there the after the beach they talk about going to get starbucks for a minute and i don't know they make a big to do about going to starbucks for a minute it, it, it seemed kind of weird when i watched it the first time and you know starbucks is uh <laughs> what do you guys call it? the chicken chicken headed snake god uh symbolism huh. um so you've got like that angle but then when they get to the back to the house, 
um, Julia Roberts' character looks out and sees all these deer in the backyard, and her husband Ethan Hawke says, "Oh, you know, deer seeing deer is a good omen in Mesoamerican mythology." Is what yes. he says. And I looked it up because I because I thought, oh, okay, I mean, I I look at symbolism often. Let me look that up, and I searched specifically for Mesoamerican symbolism. And I found there's a book by a guy named Matthew Looper called The Beast Between Deer and Maya Art and Culture. And, and I read this on my show because I've got two shows about Leave the World Behind already. Um, the short version is that it basically says that deer is the symbolism for sacrifice of victims by the elites for the gods. What? Yes. Which which ties us into all that stuff with the ball and the, the bull at the beginning I don't know, man. I try. That's why I'm like, dude. This is this is uh, Obama black hat. He's black hatting us right now. Anyway, so so you. That's what the deer symbolism is about because you see it throughout the whole movie. I mean, we. I, but at what, one time, at one point, the at one point, the uh, the the teenager says that she saw a thousand deers. Oh, interesting. remember really? You, you don't remember what she's telling her brother? Yeah, she go, said oh, a I, bunch of deers. Do they do that normally? Did yeah. she say the? Did she say a thousand? Do you remember? Was that specific? I don't know. I don't she think might've... she said a thousand. I remember as a, a bunch of deers, and then she asked if they, if they, mm-hmm. they run like. Do they run like that? Do they do that? Do they packs? Run like, yeah, yeah, packs like that. Okay, because because I know um, Manly P. Hall was talking about a thousand years of darkness, um, in the uh, the end times oh, or something like man. that. Anyway, well, I'm not in the mood for a thousand years of darkness, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not either. And, and, hey, here's a he, he, I I don't know if this ever got answered from the movie. Was that a tick? Did he got was that a disease from a tick? Did that have to do with the Wi-Fi? I know that sounds stupid, but like was that just part of the movie to scare it more because his teeth started falling out? I don't know. Yeah, they, well, they were saying that could have been from the directed energy weapons, which was that that You're humming right. sound, you know? Um, right. And that directed energy weapon thing is strange because I I saw it on 60 Minutes like two years ago. The 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 embassy in cuba yeah the cuban H- havana got, syndrome know. yeah they had a bunch mm-hmm. of like brain injuries and stuff and then the oh. intelligence agencies just this year come out with a report and was like no 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 no, none of that happened and i'm like bro they got traumatic brain injuries from <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> there's so much stuff that goes on i don't know um but in the movie you'll see there's some weird symbolism of artwork like the at the front door there there's a big piece of artwork with nothing but eyes, you know, the all seeing eye all over the place. And then a lot of the artwork in the movie, it actually changes throughout the film. For instance, in the bedroom, it starts out the water is calm. And then as the movie progresses, that artwork shows water that's sort of like, you know, got lots of waves and stuff like that. Um, oh, so okay, I never noticed that. So in the bedroom, the pictures start calm. And as the show goes on, the the water gets weirder. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You can see it. Oh, oh that's interesting. that reminds me of that film, The Devil's Advocate. Remember that large artwork? Did you see that film, The Devil's Advocate, with Al Pacino oh, yeah. and Keanu? Oh, yeah. oh, you know that huge piece of artwork that's behind them in that whole ending sequence in his office. It starts to kind of swim and, and move, you know oh, the, yeah. the people who are trapped in hell, basically. Reminds yeah, me a lot of that. that's interesting. Yeah, now, it, there was a loss, a big lawsuit about that because. That was they were using that without the artist's permission, and in all the subsequent uh, digital releases and DVD, they had to just blank the whole thing out, which I, oh, I no thought was interesting. But yeah, it's reminded me of that when you say yeah, it, that the art it, is moving. It doesn't move like that does. Like you don't see it in action. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's there, and then they change scenes, and then they come back, and now the artwork's different. You know, it's well, so funny. It, it, it's so funny how they'll make sure they change the artwork, but they won't make sure that there's no Starbucks cups. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's literally that's that's suggesting something in the in the context of the film, yeah. though, right? Uh, yeah, Isaac. yeah, for sure. I, I mean, they're they're these, you know, the people that make these movies, they're they're hip to the ideas of symbolism, and they're hip to the ideas of setting emotions and mood. So they they do all these things because sometimes it speaks to the subconscious, which you know we can all test when you watch the movie. There is some kind of unnerving, suspenseful element to that. Um, so all these things play into that. Um, and uh, to keep going through the movie, there's also the TV was, you know, all the power goes out and 
well, not the power goes out, but the uh, transmissions go out for the internet and TV and stuff. But the TV is able to flash an image real quick, and it shows CNN News is talking about a cyber attack on America, and somebody figured out to uh, pause that, and there's a QR code over the state of Kentucky. And if you click that QR code, it takes you to a website. Um, what do you mean? Whoa. So somebody froze it. Did yeah. That. What? Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, you can look it up. There was a whole Reddit on it. Someone told me about it. And I looked it up. And there's a whole Reddit. And it takes you to the website, uh, visitmercercounty.com. And it takes you to a page about Lake Shawnee, which has this abandoned amusement park that was built on a Native American ground where a bunch of people died. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's is pretty nice. Shawnee Indians? Is that is that the yeah. tribe that they're talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um yeah, it's on it's on the movie. You can find it if you if you I think there's a whole Reddit about it if you want to like learn more. Huh. Um wild. But the artwork has a lot of a lot of uh symbolism in this movie. And then there's a piece downstairs where it's a green and red map and if you of America and if you yeah. look it up it's called the uh, the United States of Attica and it was a it was a sort of activist piece from the 70s about Attica state in America. right yeah, yeah. You know, right. as a response to um some people that got killed at Attica for trying to just get some decent living conditions um but oh, John also- Lennon John Lennon has a song called Attica state it's a good song oh really are we all gonna skip the part that uh that girl was wearing a NASA shirt for no apparent reason? Just a huge NASA <laughs> fan. She's just walking around with the NASA t-shirt in the woods. Yeah, he's the boys were wearing an Obey shirt and she's wearing a NASA shirt. And when they stand together, there's a frame Obey, Obey, Obey NASA. Says Obey NASA. <laughs> that's amazing. Because right? wow. NASA's the one that's gonna tell us about the alien existence, you know. That's why they've been uh they've that's why they've been around since the supposed moon landings that I don't believe happened. Uh, because they they play a role as the sort of authority of science in in the country, and I think they're going to be the ones to, you know, prove to us there's an alien existence out there. Um, Dude, and and, and the uh, map of Arcad or whatever you uh, what was that you said that was the the, the United Redding States group. of Attica, Attica, and it was yeah. upside down. Is it always upside down? Um, no, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, was it upside down in the room? I, I, I could have sworn it was upside down. It was like a really interesting, Oh, it I knew been. that meant something. I knew that meant something. Oh, interesting. I'd have to watch that. I don't remember it. It could be. Okay. Maybe I remembered it wrong, but I remember going, why is that colored like that? Why is it upside down? I could be wrong. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. What do you think is, what do you think Ali's daughter represents? I don't know. That is, that's a great question. It's, it's 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 it's. I'm still trying to unpack this movie. I've seen it twice. It's it's really weird because there's a scene where she. I mean, she's kind of hot, right? And like, she's, she's really pool. hot. She's really yeah, hot. All right, she's really I'm hot. About, yeah, she's really hot. Yeah. <laughs> and the it's boys, hard not to be attractive. At how old is she in this movie? 21, 22 About. Yeah, something like yeah. that. It's I'll hard look, not to be hot. At that I age. think she was born in '96 because she has that tattoo that says '96. So I think You're she's right. 24. Okay, but she's 20. She's 27. Oh, okay. okay. In the movie, all right. And she, um, she's by the pool, and the the brothers like sneaking photos. So there's like the sexual element. Okay. And he's, you know, punching his clown in bed, looking at the photos, <laughs> and then she takes. It's really weird. There's a part where simultaneously two things are happening. On the one hand. Julia Roberts and the uh the other dude, um, what's it Ali? They um, George George George, they're they're flirting and they're dancing and she's kind of like mm-hmm. she wants to sleep with the dude but she's like well we shouldn't do this because he's so a I'm man like, unlike her husband. Yeah. No, but, but <laughs> Julia Roberts isn't the one that isn't like we should. I think Ali pulls back. No, she says we're married. At one point, one of them says, "Oh, we're she married. did, man." Yeah. I'm just having a bad day. And it's messed or up because because uh, his his wife is missing. She went to she's, Morocco. She's, she's just dead. MIA. She's, she's dead. She's dead. <laughs> she's dead. And her husband and Ethan Hawke's character, he's outside by the pool, and the the hot daughter goes out there with weed, and she's like, "Hey, do you smoke?" And yeah. And the first the first question she asks him, I'm going to keep it PG for the audience there. The first question she asks him, she says, "Have you ever f one of your students?" Because he's a teacher, you know. And I think. There's this sexual tension building up in this scene. I I don't know what her role is, but she's clearly. And then like later a sexual... on, she goes, "Oh, he would totally f me." Yeah. 
And I'm to her like, dad. Yeah, to her which dad. is she such an that. interesting yeah. statement too on like modern women too. Like it's just to me, it's like this it was the weird. Me Too movement of like you engage in something, then later on you act like you regretted it and that you were the. Vi- I I found that to be very interesting. How she obviously pressed him, and then later on she blames him for something. Well, do you? Yeah, I mean, you're no. Well, she saved herself by saying. Remember, she said she's like it's just it's. E- he didn't call him a player or that he cheats or nothing. He just, it's, it seems like you get women really easily. She said it in this weird way where like she saved herself from calling him a pervert or calling him disgusting. But it was like, it was that hashtag me too. Like she mm-hmm. saved herself from being, being so provocative towards him. It didn't make any sense to me either. I, cause I watched it. And I thought, I thought he didn't do anything to imply that he was going to mm-hmm. actually have sex with her, but she definitely snitched on him to her father. Yeah. She was like, scared she's like we got to get we got to get rid of these guys this guy's trying to sleep with me and I'm like, oh, she, like, she just because she just probably lives life assuming everybody wants to sleep with her no but it's a statement of just like i mean if everything in here is completely and utterly like kind of like in like detailed like that that is a detail that's very yeah. interesting and when it, she said it, it really resonated I'm like oh man this chick is trying to cause chaos yeah, it's really strange. I, I don't know what the, what it is, man. That's that's an interesting thought. I'd have to watch it again. Did you guys I, I, feel? I don't know. Did you guys feel that they wanted to make Julia Roberts seem kind of racist? Because during the movie, she says things with. She was a Karen in yeah. this movie for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm, she was yeah. a one hundred percent, and she played it really well. And that's why I, 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 I have a little different view of the relationship between her and Ethan Hawke, like. I mean, I I think the notion that men are like the alphas of a family are a giant illusion. I think men are the elf. uh, Like I've said this a thousand times, men make the rules of business. Women make the rules of society. And like, you may run a business as a man, but when you go home, you are not the king of your castle. And we've heard (laughs) RFK Jr. Say that they women run the house. That's That's, just the way it is. They're very, dominant in that sense and i don't mean that in any negative way you know so i you know i was talking to some young guys about like about how to make a a relationship work and i said give up pick your pick your battles you got to really pick your battles when you're in a relationship it's like don't don't be like i have the final say in everything go i have the final say in things that really matter to me everything else i'm just gonna (laughs) you know know what my dad said this was my dad's thing like look we pick what car we get. You can decide what color it is. That's it. We're picking with the car. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to argue on the color. But we're getting what what car I want. And I and I looked at my. I was like, well, that is a well pretty because that matters to your dad. But yeah, being in car, a relationship yeah. is like, you you know, it's like, what do you want to eat? I don't care. What do you where do you want to what restaurant? I don't care. What movie you want to see? I don't care. Okay. You where gotta, do we, where you do gotta do we throw, live? You got to let them have enough rounds to. uh you know, to le- not let them know you're carrying them through the fight, right? That's what yeah, it is. You yeah, yeah. You okay. gotta have, you got, you gotta pick your battle. And I felt like that was really the relationship between these two. Hmm. I, I agree with you, Sam. That I think a relationship. I mean, what the hell do I know? I've been to years and years of uh, marital counseling and therapy. Um, but I've been married twenty years now. This is our twentieth anniversary wow. a couple months ago, dude. I've and- been in a relationship for twenty years. Oh wow. Yeah. So so the, the, you're not wrong in the sense that um I I do value a a woman has a particular like with my wife, you know, like when it comes to business and versus my home marriage relationship, I make the call on a lot of financials, you know, and not like I like, oh, I spend all the money, you come to me and ask me. It's more of like I'm trying to be responsible to make sure all the bills are paid and we've got a retirement, making sense of yeah. all these things. And she I give her the keys to the relationship because she's women are, are very good and intuitive and um their emotional intelligence is like off the charts they're nesters I mean, dude it's yeah. why they're dominating white collar jobs right now because oh, when they go into a, a office they they're nesters they they set everything up they're built for that it's basically like they're taking how they ran a household into mm-hmm. the office Men yeah they turn a house like into a home yeah yep totally. they turn an yeah. office into a home that's how they're they're built for that yeah, because oh, you ever so go right. to a, um, uh, you know, if you ever go, like, when we bought our current home, it was a dude who was single. He got divorced from his wife, however long, not too long ago, but long ago. 
and you could totally tell it was like a bachelor pad, man. It had no homey feel to it. It was like a lazy boy in the middle of the floor. Yeah. With a, you yeah. know, just a TV. And, um, you know, there's, to me, you know, a lot of people, like I value women and I value um, the things that my wife really excels at. And, yeah, I do too. And and so it's, not, I, I guess when I call Ethan Hawke a cuck, I don't want to be misconstrued, but he he's the one. He's not. The a, end. He's not. He's not Will Smith, is what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> no, he. Well, he probably is Will Smith. Actually, now you think about the relationship between him and Jada Pink. Pink, it's like you. You, hey man, you got to pick your fights with these people, and you know, it's like you know, we always hear like you always see these memes. Where are the men from the 1950s? So like if you took a man from the 1950s and brought him today and asked him to work, he would get fired instantly by human resources and he would get sued and he would just be called misogynist. Like you have to adapt to today's rules, man. And, and it he hit, sucks. And he, and he would definitely hit his wife. So I don't think she'd want that. Yeah. Right. I mean, for sure. So <laughs> it's a different, like that man, if, like it's like everyone's like oh my god people are so dumb now and i understand why you say that i understand that but the information skill sets changed like the information that matters now is much different than it was a hundred years ago and oh. like my grandmother hold on my hey, grandmother who i love thought the fucking answer machine was voodoo she wouldn't <laughs> work it because she thought it was black magic right like if you ask let's say like einstein to send an email today how long would it take for him to understand how to send an email <laughs> or to upload a tweet or any of that so it's just a different skill set i'm not yeah. saying that they're not stupid because they're getting saturated with dumb knowledge that they don't know how the their own government works so that in, in turn is is dangerous but the the skill set is is much the necessary skill set is much different today than it was 50 years even 30 yeah. years ago and the metaverse South Park got it completely right. You just watched that. Who were, were they not begging the plumbers to go do something? Weren't the plumbers the rich people in that metaverse South Park thing? And it's yeah. exactly the skill set. The skill I, set I watched has that. I'm like, I have to intern for a fucking handyman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I well, and, and, and at the end of the movie, you remember when he calls himself a useless man because he probably yeah, is good at he's good at sending emails. He's good at doing shit that when the Internet works, it's useful. But when the Internet doesn't work, Kevin Bake was fucking killing it. He had water. He had medicine. By the way, one of the biggest criticisms I have of this movie is the casting of Kevin Bacon. As, <laughs> Why is that? As a conspiracy theorist <laughs> outsider guy like <laughs> He wow, just you know, doesn't have that energy. It's just he he's like playing him like I'm a I'm a outside. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're 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 a footloose guy. You you should be dancing. Is this, does you're he do an accent in this? Because he his yeah, he's like terrible. trying to be like you know yeah, his accents are bad. Get my family, and I'm like, bro, it's it like, and this is a big problem. It goes back to Roseanne, Ice Cube. Mm. He's like rich kids playing outlaws. Okay, who would have played that? Who do you think would have played a better? Kevin Bacon for that movie. Who, who who's you the have guy put? in in um the event uh, like um Guardians of the Galaxy that would kind of had the flute that and then, like went and killed? Like, oh yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. Um, what is that guy's name? Hold on. I, know I don't hate about. Kevin Bacon. I think he's it's dead now. That, that, guy's dead, like, that he? seemed like the weirdest. Well, maybe you know, especially saying Michael now Rooker. Kevin Michael Rooker is like a yeah. Kevin Bacon's doing all this like super progressive pol political stuff you're like and you're gonna have him play the conspiracy theorist like yeah. he's too shiny for that yeah that's true yeah well yeah and that that's why that's why i said but but you know what's you know what's interesting is i i say um ethan hawk's a cut because he's he's begging to kevin bacon he's like i'm a useless man but the fact but the truth is he did all that to try to score some uh, antibiotics for his son, and that actually worked because the uh, uh, George guy, he had a strap, and he tried to do it through force, but Kevin Bacon was like, dude, I got a shotgun, I'm, you know, whatever. And then uh, it wasn't until Ethan Hawke was crying and talking about how he's a big pussy that he actually got what he needed for his family. So on the one hand, it's like, I don't know, man. Like he's, Maybe he's a smarter dude than I give him credit for. Maybe I he, agree. Cause in the end times, like I'd probably do this because I don't know how to hunt or fish. I'm screwed. You know, I don't know. That's going to be me. I think. Damn, so, you're be... so you're telling us we better learn how to beg. 
<laughs> if you don't know how to, if you don't, don't know, know how, how to negotiate, for press. sure. Uh, I mean, but yeah, Johnny's the only one who knows how to hunt here. Oh, so we're begging Johnny. Johnny, John, Johnny the... sent me, dude. Johnny sent me a house I wanted so badly. It's like an eight bedroom historical house. Yeah, dude. It was seven thousand square feet. It was. It's in South Carolina. It's a historic. It's on the historic registry, and it's uh, it's it's a hundred thousand dollars per thousand square feet. So it's seven hundred grand. It's seven thousand square feet. How, how many acres? And does it have a well? Uh, well, I mean, anything in South Carolina is gonna have a well like that in the country. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Part of me wants to go get it. Just tune into a giant podcast studio where I could live there. Just it's crazy. I'm though. ready, dude. I'm but ready. Can you imagine how much that would cost? In LA? I mean, that'd be. Hundred million or I mean, five mil? Uh, no, but mil? it depends on where it is, of course. Yeah, but if it was like in a good, like on the hills or something, that'd be you'd pay a hundred million dollars for that house or something. It'd be crazy. But so, so it, it's just super interesting to me that whole thing. And so, so I, I, there's a lot going on. There was a shed. What was it? What was the? Inf oh yeah. What were they infer inferring with the shed? I, I don't know that one. Um, because I also was kind of stumped with it because when they go out there the boy is trying to screw with the girl and he says that there was a homeless guy sleeping in the leaves and points to the leaves there's a big impression in the leaves so and then he I, says again, and, and, and then he says he was looking at her because remember he looks through the window and then he says yeah look, weren't you sleeping right there and then he doesn't say he was looking at her he's just and you got it. we all got it in the movie we're like oh yeah that fool's creeping out on you probably jerking off to her but it yeah. was weird. We had it made no sense to the movie. I thought they were going to go somewhere with it at the end of it. Yeah, there's there's weird plot points that I don't I don't understand where they went or why they went that way. And then the other scene in the shed is where um, uh, Julia Roberts and uh, the other daughter were out there, and they sort of find this bonding between them between the two of them. Finally, they kind of bond together on their paranoia paranoia of other people. Um, and that's where the deer surrounds them. And oh, that's very know. interesting because you're right. They they both have a like a racist view almost of the other of the other group, where it's like they're both equally racist on each other. Yeah, yeah, kind of like counterbalancing forces there. Um, but yeah, to to stick with the movie, the plot line of of where they're at. Then what we find out one of the neighbors, uh, their names was the Huxleys. And of course, that reminds mm -hmm. us of, of Aldous Huxley, one of our uh, favorite globalist folks. Um, and another Netflix movie, the one about, because you remember when Jamie Foxx was having that medical thing and people were saying that he got cloned. Uh, and then at the same time, Netflix releases a movie called They Cloned Tyrone about cloning that Jamie Foxx was in. If you watch that movie, there's also a Huxley reference there of Soma. It's called a soda. Uh, they have a soda called Soma which is uh, in Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Uh, it's like a drug they take. But, you know, Huxley is is part of this whole Aleister Crowley, um, Aeon of Horus type of thing. He's the one who wrote The Doors of Perception, which influenced people like Tim Leary to try to ascend to these higher levels of consciousness. It, it's the where the doors got their name from. And Huxley was the guy, he practiced ritual magic, and he was friends with Aleister Crowley. Um and that's these two started doing psychedelics together and mescaline and all this stuff. And his brother Julian was an evolutionary biologist and eugenicist, which and he's the guy who coined the term transhumanism, uh, which you know, a lot of the stuff in the agenda 2030, the UN agenda 2030 stuff that conspiracy theorists say is the future they have planned for us. It supports a lot of the ideas of Huxley's uh, eugenics and nature worship and managing the population. Uh, which to me, like all these things kind of fit into the theme of the film, which is about elites sort of preparing for the downfall or facilitating the downfall. of America. Yeah, for sure, bro. For which sure. Is it, which is exactly what George, like you said earlier, Sam, there, there's actual conversations in the movie about George's clientele who are part of this evil cabal that meet up on the solstice and they know about all the big moves that are happening before they happen. And I, I don't know. It, to me, it's, it's so on the nose about what's really going on. Yeah. But I found that line about how nobody's in charge. Very illuminating. Like, yeah, are they that, telling us? I like, are they what, trying they to they divert want. us? Is it misinformation? Or are they going, guess what? No one's running. 
Yeah, that's what they're trying to tell us is that the 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 elitist guy that is buddies with George is implying like, look, we don't we're part of this big, rich, evil cabal, but we don't actually control anything. We just kind of know when it's going to happen at best. And it makes you wonder, OK, is this is this like they live John Carpenter's movie where. OK, so the elites aren't controlling anything. Then who is? Is it these aliens, these shape shifting lizard people? <laughs> is that what they're trying? Is that what's the truth here that they're trying to slowly r- reveal to us? I don't know. Uh, there was a scene in the movie. Uh, we're not going to get too much into it, but Ethan Hawke gets pulled. He pulls over the side. It was a very interesting movie. Now, Xavier, you speak Spanish. Did you know what she was saying? Yeah, that she just wanted that she hadn't seen anybody in forever and that she wanted to go, but she was kind of lost. She didn't. She said she'd been walking for days. She was just scared. I'd say she was a real Mexican, if that's what you're asking me. She wasn't. No, like but a white... <laughs> I found it. I wanted to know what she was saying. And I felt like it was an interesting statement on Ethan Hawke's character. Because later like, on, he begs for help from oh, somebody I, else. Oh, I get what you mean. How he, he I thought, I honestly thought he was going to let her in. I thought he's going to show up. I would have, like, I would have let her in. I would have yeah, let her in. I thought, I thought the point of the movie was he's going to show up with an extra gr- chick and he's going to have to explain, like, it went down, but he lets her. I mean, who knows if she dies? But he left, he, you're right. That does show a state, a uh, character of him because he didn't help out when he needed, when he could have helped someone out. But then the, 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 the plane comes and something's happening. Do you have any symbolism with that? Because that, to me, is predictive programming, trying to tell us that another country is going to be doing this, which I don't believe. Like dropping the pamphlets from the yeah. sky. Yeah. Well, I think we do that um, in the in the U.S. Before we're going to bomb someplace, we'll drop pamphlets saying like, "Hey, you need to clear out" or something. I don't know. We're yeah, coming for through. sure, one hundred percent. Huh. Hey, um. Uh, is there any symbolism in friends? I mean, I know he just died, but I mean, obviously, do you think that was in there before he died? Do you think it was after it, yeah, he they, died? They, they started filming I mean, it last year, so they must, they must have, uh, I mean, you wouldn't take it out either. Like the guy just died. I mean, I don't know. Do you think it was a tribute to him? I mean, it was just weird how it ended with friends. The movie ended with friends. Yeah. The girl goes in there, puts a fucking, a cassette player in the, in the thing and press play and it ends with friends the, the the show is like about it starts off with this girl watching friends and i'm like what is this and i know matthew died on ketamine but i just don't know if this was before it's just it interesting after. that the end of the movie is very interesting what did you think of it i didn't like how the girl was she she broke into the other neighbor's house the thorns which is um a a, a name from uh the movie the omen damien thorn that's one what? of my listeners. That's one of my listeners told me. Yeah, crazy, huh? Uh, but she goes into the Thorns residence and she's eating all the food. And I think, well, what a jerk. She's not gonna let her family have any of this food. She's not even gonna tell them. And then to make it worse, she she hears her mother calling she, for her. You're right. She does hear. Her. You're right. She doesn't even like she she's like, okay, let me go tell her I'm okay. But then she changes her mind and she's like, Well, let me go see what's down this hall. And <laughs> she goes down that hall and finds the doomsday bunker and there and what's interesting is that doomsday bunker if you notice it had the name uh commodus written on the front door of it what and yeah on on the door and commodus is the roman emperor who was the emperor when they had a civil war if you look it up um so i don't know just just, it it is weird i don't know what the friends connection is i never watched an episode of friends my whole life so i i couldn't tell you yeah yeah but but there is there is um there is another element to uh, bring up one more element when when Julia Roberts and the girl are in the shed, they're bonding over their sort of paranoia of other people. And the perspective I think they're trying to show us is how you can't really trust human beings to do the right thing. And I go back and forth on my viewpoint of the Illuminati because sometimes the human species lets me down too and i think well good god maybe they're right for trying to control us because most of us can't handle anything and um that's kind of their perspective and i think they're trying to put that forward of saying look you know there's an illuminati out there controlling things and they're kind of doing what's best for you because you can't be trusted to do the right thing which i obviously don't don't subscribe to i think we should all be given the free will to you know make our lives better or worse on you know however we want to do that 
Uh, but that's kind of the perspective that they issue, and that's kind of the last conversation they have um, towards the end of the movie there before they, they go over to uh, Kevin Bacon's place who you know shows us the the doomsday prepper lifestyle and <laughs> um, and then we get the doomsday bunker scene and 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 that's kind of it man that's 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 kind of yeah how it it's goes. such an end a weird ending to a movie to the point I'm like what did we just want like <laughs> I feel like they only told us like one small segment of this story yeah and and uh, well and <laughs> yes and it ends with the the they play a song by Lil Yachty called the paradigm um jay dyer sent me that i got a shout out jay dyer um, shout out jay dyer shout out jay dyer uh because i think the last time i was on here i was on here with him yep. um and it talks about it's a it's a it's talking about a new paradigm that's what the movie's showing us and it's it's got lyrics about you know embracing the light and the devils in town and it's a very ominous ending to you know when you unpack the lyrics of that thing it's it's also very strange and also, like I, I can't, I can't forget, you know, Kubrick showed us the elitist perspective in Eyes Wide Shut, but he also showed that to us in The Shining, and you see symbolism okay. from The Shining in this movie. Uh, the one in specific is when she goes into that doomsday bunker. If you look at the products on the shelf, they have Calumet, which is the uh, no Native kidding. American logo, wow. yes, which is infamously and iconically in the uh, sort of. Uh, not not doomsday, but in the pantry of the shining for the winter hall. Wow, yeah, I mean that's that can't be mistaken for anything. No, else. that's clearly no not way. to that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, there's there's I mean there's so much to unpack in this movie. It it's it's wild. Do you it think is this is? Wild. Do you think this is going to be another movie like that that people just go on the rabbit hole and we'll talk about it six years from now because we? Oh yeah, there'll be some new rabbit. Is it good holes, enough to be that, symbolism. Isaac? Because I, I saw uh, the no, I don't think it's good enough for that. But I do think that a lot of these things are going to come. You know, I over the last few years, I I didn't understand. You know, when you guys you live in this sort of red pill conspiracy world too, and I. I guess I'm still shocked when I hear people just now waking up to some of these very basic ideas. I'm not even talking level 10 red pill conspiracy that, you know, the shape shifting lizard people are running the world through fifth dimensional frequencies and stuff. I'm talking like questioning the news and I, and it yeah. still shocks me. And I forget that so many people are still doing the, very minimum of waking up to reality of what's going on so that's why i think this movie will be continued to talk about because people will see these sorts of things unfolding and and referencing back to it uh and i noticed you know just having my finger on the pulse of conspiracy theory and film symbolism because that's you know pretty much what i do uh when i first watched this movie like i said it was the i think it was the day after it came out i watched it and thought, oh crap! I gotta, I, I might have to do a show about this. There's a lot here, and then I rewatched it, took my notes, filmed it. One well, like the two days it took me to do all that, all of a sudden it was already, it, it already started blowing up, and I there was TikToks about it, and people pointing out symbolism, and I was like, oh crap! And then by the time I release it, I'm, I've got people sending me videos of other people pointing out symbolism that I didn't even catch, and I, my, I did a, I did a, um. The episode I did on it was almost two hours, I think, of me trying to explain what I did see. And then there's even more coming in. So, I mean, there's so many layers to unpack on this movie. You know, I'm I did two episodes on my feed. So I'm clocked in at almost three hours already talking about this movie. And uh, there's lots of other themes like, you know, you guys were bringing up the points about what's up with the, the girl. What's her role in this? What's the role of the shed? There's a lot of things to unpack here. So I just think I, I do think it's going to go on for a bit. Here's what I'll tell you about this movie, Johnny. It is well shot. It is well shot. I feel like it's incomplete. I feel like it is attempt to predictive programming. So will it will it last the test of time? I think if things it predicts comes true, yes, people yeah. will talk about it. Yeah, um, I think it will. But it isn't. I mean, it's not. I I wouldn't. It's not a bad movie. It's just. It's anxiety written, and it's just like nothing I've ever seen before. It's interesting because the critics are about three quarters, you know, saying it's a good film, and then the but the fan reviews have all been really negative. It seems on uh, yeah, you know, I get on the it because website. it gives you a negative feeling. 
Well, yeah, and, and so many people, I, I mean, I, you know, some of them I live with uh, don't want to feel anything other than a positive emotion when they go to a movie. Uh, I, that's not what I go for. I mean, I believe in, you know, catharsis, but yeah, so I, that makes sense to me. Sure. I mean, and my blue, per, my blue, per, my blue pill friends that watched it, they said it was good. If you're not red pilled, you think it's a good movie because you're not watching it with predictive programming, with these the symbolism. You're just watching it, like he said, like the, like how you try to watch it the first time, but you just couldn't. It's the they watch it like that, and I think it's a good movie if you're watching it without the idea of being red pilled and fucking Obama setting us up for failure. Um. Isaac, great episode. Thank you so much. Oh man, thanks for having me on. I appreciate you it. You crushed it. What uh one more time, tell them where they can find you. So I do a podcast called Occult Symbolism and Pop Culture. You can find it everywhere. Uh if you want more on this movie, because you know, I, I walked through the whole thing, but I, I unfortunately for the free feed folks, I put that on my Patreon. Every month I do a Patreon bonus show. Um Patreon pat- bonus show. Yeah. So patreon.com oh. slash Illuminati Watcher. You can you can check out the full show there. And in fact, in the month of December, I'm I'm trying out. I don't know if I'm going to continue to do it. I'm trying out this. I signed up for this app. It's kind of like uh, I can send a cameo in a way where if I see you sign up on Patreon, it notifies me and I can get on the app and I record a quick little one minute video. You know, hey, what's up? Merry Christmas. All these things. Um uh, so I'm doing that for the month of December. I'm trying it out to see if I like doing it. But if you sign up on Patreon, you can check that out and I'll send you a little one minute video um, and you get all the things, man. You download a couple books. I wrote a whole book about Kubrick symbolism that you get for free and you know all the greatest things in life. So, um, yeah, I'm all over the place, though. But, yeah, check out uh, check out my podcast on all the feeds. Well, it was a great episode. We got two more episodes left for you. We're going to record one more and then we're going to put out the uh, live for the last live and then we take in the uh the rest of the year off which is two weeks so uh it's a great way that we're going out with two great shows thank you guys so much please stay tuned for the highlights hey stay with us here's a clip from broken simulation so uh this probably should have been fun with stupid too this is a headline from the guardian are you ready for this yeah earth on the verge of five catastrophic climate tipping points yeah, scientists I, I are just, warning i just they just are just stupid they really are just stupid. They just Five. they've lost the narrative. I mean, you just see Al Gore just screaming. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, I wish we were back in the day when we had just trusted news outlets. You're like, yeah, that would just pump your propaganda out and, and no one questioned it. Yeah, like it's you like Al Gore fuck. didn't live through the whole thing leading up and after 9 11. Yeah. Did like, he did yeah. he miss that? Or, or or when he when he had the election stolen from him and he totally played along with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he. I mean, he got cucked on that. Yeah. Is this what you think uh, the world would look Oh, uh, no. Where is it? Hold on. This is it. This El is Gore. It's yeah, like, what, it. the, what the hell's going on here, man? Wait, El Gore, listen, you remember when I did a movie and I told you all this stuff and none of it happened? Lock Trust box. me this time. Yeah, right. <laughs> By 2023, Florida will be underwater. <laughs> One based on. <laughs> Hold on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lock box. That's what I remember. Broadcasting and then moving on to the internet and to social media has guy? disrupted the balances that used to exist. Hold on, uh, bro. That Listen made to what? representative democracy bro? work much better. Let me pause it. Bro, we should take off your hat real quick and tip it. <laughs> to tip it to all of the fucking podcasters out there. Listen to what he just said. This fucking <laughs> skull and bones power bottom Momo power bottom Momo just something. fucking gave us the best shout out ever. Tip my cap to you, my friends. Go on. To one based on broadcasting and then moving on to the internet and to social media has disrupted yeah. the balances that used to exist. Uh, yeah. that you remember made where we would lie democracy and you guys believed us? Remember when you had no choice on what to watch yeah. so that they could just spew yeah. completely boring yeah. lies yeah. all day yeah. and you had to watch it because there's literally nothing else to watch? I preferred I that. I would love actually. that guy goes, hey man, you remember when you put that movie out and then like said that stuff yeah. and like none of it happened? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird because I was just in Florida yesterday and you said that wasn't going to be there by yeah, 2020. I remember being in like Miami like 
30 years ago or like like I'd say like honestly like 20 years ago going oh man this is going to be underwater soon and it's not even close it just so he's he's so I mean like the, you have to sit there and allow old men like this just to say stupid shit that's literally the, the base of the movie n- n- no country for old men yeah. It's like this Such should be a good movie. no internet for old men. Such a good movie. That's what this is about. This guy's like, oh, sorry. there was a time when we could just say stuff and you believed us. And now we're constantly getting fact checked and nobody believes us. And it sucks. Uh, what a, this guy's, I mean, what a weird Do you think they're in Henry Kissinger's like death? All of his friends are like, dude, he got out at the right time. I mean, this thing sucks. <laughs> yeah. Nobody believes yeah. anything we're saying anymore. It is weird that he made it to 100, though. That's yeah, so I mean, that fat fuck. Self-governing people rely people. on a shared base of knowledge that serves as a basis for reasoning together collectively. But uh, if you have social media that is dominated by algorithms that... Uh, pull people down these uh, rabbit holes that are a bit like <laughs> pitcher plants. These algorithms, uh, they are the digital equivalent of AR-15s. They ought to be banned. They really ought to what? be banned. It's an abuse well, hold on. Can of I the just public tell you? forum. AR-15, but, when you these, it, when but that's the biggest in- twist I've ever seen to get guns worked yeah, into a conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. was to compare it to algorithms. Yeah, for sure. Like, what is he talking about? Uh, but do I, I do agree with him. The algorithms, he's right. They're algorithms dangerous. Algorithms are... Uh, but they, Guns, they bring all into that of us. It's crazy. Well, it also it also works to his advantage because the people that believe his bullshit still oh, they love it, never man. hear any of the evidence that he's bitching about right now. Yeah. Ever. Like if there's people that still think 9-11 happened, they still think that JFK was shot by one person, they still think vaccines are work, they still think COVID was real. Yeah, the only way they ever hear the truth is if some guy who drives an ambulance happens to be driving by their yeah, corner and, and they playing BS playing. to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, so he's he's completely uh off the res. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's just lost. I mean, I, mean, I mean, remember after he lost when he grew that beard out and just went nuts so for a while yeah, until that he's movie just came a, out? an idiot. Okay, yeah. I gotta go, Johnny. Uh, I, I literally two, have I got to go. Two stories left, man. You are pushing two it. stories. Look, we so, have to do a show tomorrow at ten a.m. You chose that time. That's that's too early. No, George Santos has has now come out against gay marriage. I thought no. that's funny. But by the way, George Santos is broken Sims, fucking spirit animal. He's the and best. I am sorry, but I will not hate that guy. Should we put him on a t-shirt? Do you think? Just oh, the, yes. Uh, George yeah. Santos is my spirit animal. Yeah, broken yes, simulation. Yes, yeah. yes. George Santos. It's my spirit animal. Uh, disgraced Republican Representative George Santos has criticized same-sex marriage on the anniversary of his own same-sex wedding, <laughs> saying it should have been a civil union. <laughs> He's the best. The first- I love him. <laughs> I love everything about him. I love like I love that he's the best liar of all the liars, and that's why they had to get rid of him because his lying was so good. It just made their lying look bad. <laughs> he's like, also the gayest member ever of the House of Representatives. No, that and that's you know, saying like something. he's the op- most openly gay. Yeah, but There's he's some super real gay, power though. bombs. He's there. like super clean. Like how 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 nasty of a pig was George Bush Senior? I bet you they would just were like they play a game. How much can you store in his ass? And they were just like, dude, his ass is like carrot tops, fucking prop box. They've just oh, so much uh-huh. toys inside there. But George, so, I mean, like we we Santos, we played his um. His uh his uh cameos. I mean, They're that so should be a regular thing on the show. Like gold, we yeah. just oh dude, can we get him? We should do a cameo. Oh, from him. for sure. We should get him to do like a promo, yeah. like stinger. Hey, you're something. you're watching the, the hottest, gayest number I one. How much, I bet it's like two hundred bucks. Yeah, look that, like that up because we might have to get it. What's our what's our budget for this? Uh, Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Because I think they're like two fifty as well. Okay, right? if it's two fifty days, we'll do it. Okay, let me see. <laughs> George Santos, former congressional icon, and it's got like his nails being painted, like that little icon. Of yes. Um, let me see. Oh, personal video, five hundred dollars. Oh, too too much. Too, much, too right? much. Not worth it. That's too much. Not worth it. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So the first non-incumbent, openly gay representative elected. How about to if Congress- we can get him to say, "Hey, Broken Sim is the number one podcast. I love to get pegged to." He'd probably do it too. 
Santos was expelled from the House of Representatives on the 1st of December following a string of I charges against him. Uh, now Santos has hit out against the concept of same-sex marriage, claiming that he was against it despite having a husband <laughs> of his own. I was an opposer of gay marriage, he told reporters. He got married because that was the option, but he did not believe that it should be called marriage. I thought it should have been a civil union. It would have given us the same benefits, the same rights under the law. Making it a marriage was never the business of the government. I'm not saying I oppose just gay marriage. I oppose marriage by the government in general. So he's against hey, all I'm marriage. I'm not against that. I'm not against that. I'm not against that. Anyway, I'm not against that is at a uh, self-hating gay apparently now. Um, not against that at all. All right, so the last story is, you know, a lot of a lot of politicians have this same issue. This is from Ars Technica. A worm's ass rear end develops its own head and then wanders off to mate. This is something that's going on in nature. What? So, some worms, their butts grow eyes and a brain and then go off and mate. And then come back? I guess let's see. Some do it horizontally, some do it vertically, some do it sexually, and others asexually. Then there are some organisms that would rather grow an ass that develops into an autonomous appendage equipped with its own antennas, eye, and brain. The appendage will detach from the main body and swim away, carrying gonads that will merge with those from other disembodied rear ends and give rise to a new generation. So there's worms out there, dude, that their asses detach from their body, grow brains, and heads and eyes and all kinds of shit, and then go make new little worms. D that reminds me of detachable penis. Yeah, you talked about that before, and we didn't. I had to look it up. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I mean, dude. I mean, Hamilton man shot in testicle by ex girlfriend. Oh, that's and you know women laugh at that jokes. They always laugh at that. No, They're always like, oh my god, he got his dick shot. That's so no, funny. Nothing. And funny. then if you make a joke about a chicken's. If Matt Wright makes a joke about oh, yeah. chicken pump, oh, punch punch in the face, it's like, oh yeah, how can you do that? Forget about it. Oh. Hot anchor, hot anchor Mike alert. Shall about the incident, he just wrapped up that interview and joins us live. So Mike, faces. what did she's, he have to say? She's already laughing. Look. <laughs> yeah, Amber, we are along Schuler Avenue in Hamilton, and uh, you know, we actually Mike saw is, Charlie Glenn come out of the pissed. hospital about uh, oh, three o'clock this student. afternoon. Okay. He was surrounded by family members. Now he was able to walk into his house, albeit barely slowly. <laughs> Meanwhile, his ex-girlfriend, the woman accused of shooting him, is now behind bars. I need an ambulance ASAP because um, uh, somebody, Charlie Glenn just got shot. Police say the woman on the call is Glenn's oh. ex-girlfriend, 36-year-old Tanya Nestor. Not bad. Him uh, it's in between the legs. I just don't know exactly who. Shot him in between the legs? Yes, I don't know if it hit his privates or what. The alleged victim is 49-year-old Charlie Glenn. Wanted me to take a walk with her, and I found out that she had a pistol with her, and I, she said it was a pellet run, and I, I said, well, let me see it, because you know, I'm not going to go anywhere with you if you got a gun. And she what, pulled it out. What's their and, relationship be like? Shot me. <laughs> Paul Carpenter said he rushed to the house to check on his friend. My thoughts was, that, you know, was he okay? Or, it, it does still know, got uh, dick. Is he is he dead? Is he alive? I didn't know. Is he worse but, than uh, dead? They said he was okay, and, and you know it wasn't life threatening. Police say Glenn was able to get the gun away from his ex girlfriend. He still has it in his hand. Yes. Okay. He so here's the it. problem. Look at Glenn. Glenn looks ninety. He's forty nine. He looks sixty. Right? Yeah, he does. That. He okay. That, that guy's forty nine. Uh, he's still slicking back his hair too. In the all two, right twenty twenty. So Glenn is forty nine. Looks sixty, and he's dating a chick who looks like she's in her thirties. Yeah, right? Went out the front door because he's trying to leave. Which way did she run? Um, I, um, I don't know. The caller told police they saw Nestor run east from the house through an alley towards Crawford Woods. Hamilton police say they eventually arrested Nestor at a house on Caldwell Street about a half mile from the crime Tweaking scene. Tweaking her balls off. Back oh, at the house, the dispatcher asked about Glenn's wound. Okay, is there more than one wound or is it just the one? Is it just one wound, Charlie? One wound shot, but I think it went through my pistol into my butt cheek and out. Oh. It's unfortunate. You know, that somebody would, you know, I don't know if they had relationship problems. By the way, what. where Chat is this? Is. Wait, did you hear what he just said? I don't know if they had relationship problems or what. <laughs> I'm telling you this, dude. It's Look Ohio, at these houses. It Ohio. looks third world, bro. I saw something about I mean, Joe the Burrow rest of the world, it, like, dude, America yeah, is effed. It's Ohio, yeah. America is effed. A lot of fentanyl deaths in that town, I guarantee yeah. you. Yeah. The Pentagon is banned from mandating pronouns in a compromise on their defense bill. Doesn't don't you love that the Pentagon 
uh, that you know is basically responsible for killing people. They even worried about pronouns. Isn't that that's weird, right? What's that? The Pentagon has been uh, they actually in a compromise banned from mandating pronouns in the latest defense bill. Good. So they can't. But isn't that weird that the Pentagon? No, I mean is like Johnny. Pronouns? I watched this. I watched this video. You got to watch it sometime. Okay. Uh, it was I, I did a deep conspiracy uh, rewind on it and. Um, Hold on. And next week, we have an update on the guy who saw the woman with the it's, curved it's, up arm. Hold on. Uh, the, the ghostly person with the arm yeah. like slithering through Ed, a steering wheel. We yeah. have an update on that. Edward, Edward G. Griffin. And he does this this uh, doc. It's 48 minutes long. It's called The Capitalist Conspiracy. Okay. And it, it breaks down exactly what's going on here and with this military Where? bullshit. With all this cultural Marxism, it's called pressure from above, pressure from below. Okay. And it's just meant to destabilize you, make you your anxiety, and beg for the government to come and save you. That's what they want you to do. And now, a highlight from Cash Daddies. He think like, look, I'm saying the NASDAQ could get a 10% correction. That's pretty st steep. That brings us from 15000 down to 13500 Harry says we're going to get a 90% correction in 2000. You know where that put this, puts the NASDAQ? Down to two thousand, from fifteen thousand down to two thousand. We're talking it's... bridge jumping, baby. <laughs> jumping in front of Mack trucks and yo, we're talking a lot of suicide rate will go up three hundred percent if what Harry says happens. Um, yeah. Now you know, you know, is this guy right? Is he not right? Look, he's got he's got mad street cred. He's got mad street cred. Comes from a solid background. He's been right in the, in the past. A lot of people look up to Harry Dent, kind of like Michael Burry. But if he is correct, ooh, it's going to be a painful 2024, man. Here's I what he's going to be here's, a here's, painful 2024. Here's what he says. Uh, this is one time I'm telling you, do not listen to your financial advisor. Things are not going to come back to normal in a few years. We may never see le these levels again. And this crash is not going to be a correction. It's going to be more like the 29 to 32, 1929 to 1932 level. And any, yeah. the depression. And anybody who sat through that would have shot their stockbroker. Yeah, that's what he said. And I, that kind of shocked me because, you know, I've been saying on this show, I think we're going to pull back. We're too overbought. People are, the, the greed factor is too high right now. I think we need to pull back to be healthy, but I'm thinking five, ten percent, maybe fifty. This motherfucker says ninety yeah. percent. That is basically that is panic over panic. I mean, panic that, at the disco. That makes what's going on in Israel and in Russia and Ukraine. That's like playground shit. Yeah. That's 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 nothing. And it's you based on this means? idea that since 2009, it's all artificial since then is what he's saying. It's all based on money printing and deficits since 2009. Uh, yeah. 27 trillion over 15 years to be exact, he says. It's off so the charts. So just keep and buying it's more art. gold. Um, yeah. I hope Bitcoin works. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. That's Bitcoin. what I'm worried about. Because you're starting you know, to Johnny, see Bitcoin's Johnny. moving more with the market now. which is Johnny, look what he me. says about Bitcoin, Johnny. Look what he says. Johnny, look what he says. Yeah, it's right here. But I, I just don't. He says, uh, and crypto is going back to be 96%. He, he says, that's talking about a crash, 96%. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I, it depends on if it ends He's up saying getting 96% of crypto. He's saying gonna Bitcoin's crash. going back to 2000, baby. It's crash God, 96%, please yeah. do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. Do it. Why? Because you want to buy it? Yeah, I'll buy all of it. You sound like those people praying for the stock market to crash. You know, don't, don't do that. That's what people well, killed you know Mark what? for, remember? The stock market crashed tomorrow, I'd be in damn good shape. Because even though I'm long a lot of things in my IRA, I still am sitting on a ton of cash after last week, after selling a ton of stuff. And I got right. SQ. If the stock market crashed tomorrow and I and you're holding SQQQQ, dude, you're doing <laughs> yeah. jacks. You're the happiest bitch in the world because you're crushing it. So that's what you got to talk about. You got to hedge. You can't always be long. You can't be always forging ahead. You got to have stuff to hedge, man. That's the way. But what he's talking about, like, I mean, he's talking about, like, like you said, in the world stuff. I mean, you, there might not be a market for a while after that. If what this, I mean, this is real. Like, there's nothing to invest in after that, possibly. It's, well, you know, even your yeah. money is hurt yeah. at that point. Yeah.
uh, if the if 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 this happens, what he says, there's these big companies like Coca Cola, uh, you know, uh, Ford, Apple. You're out of your mind if you don't think these guys are hedged. Also, these guys, yeah. these companies also have puts on everything. They and they're hedged if things shit the bed too. Um, look, man, the wealthy, they're not stupid. The wealthy's not stupid. The wealthy are hedged right to the gills. Like Michael Burry, a lot of these guys, hedge funds, they're short a lot of stuff just in case. So that's the ticket, you know? You got to be you got to be hedged. You got to have some things that if they go down, you still make money. We talk about that all the oh. time on the Patreon. Sam, so, where are you going to be this week? Uh, I am going Anywhere? to be. What do you mean uh, for comedy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I know I'm you going like to, to throw be, that in early. I'm doing my revival again, where I just do an hour of spiritual talking and and fighting and karate chopping. Um, we we'll be doing that. When is that? Um, and that is well, actually, yeah. I'm going to be um, I'm going to be at the room two three seven. It's next to the Rabbit Hole Bar. That's this Friday night. Uh, and then I got a spot at the comedy store late night on a, a midnight spot. Uh, and I think that might be the end of my spots for 2023. And then I got some great shows coming up in January. I'm very excited about what the future holds, boys and girls. So things are great. Loving me, loving you. Uh -huh. Right on. I'll be at the Avid Brothers oh. and the Marcus King concert. Remember that big guy that we did that story on Broken Sim about how this really smoking hot chick wandered into his trailer and he ended up marrying her that yeah. big he's play, he's opening for this band yeah where well, i'm going to the show yeah he's opening for this avid brothers band uh oh that's awesome john yeah, i'm super yeah. happy well for remember you. you love that guy you were like oh he's awesome yeah i'm happy for that guy i'm happy he's winning we're gonna go up to chapel hill and hang out uh on campus <laughs> a little bit and then go to the show in raleigh we got one for you if you listen to degenerate gamblers with Haley tostado and myself uh Tostado, yeah. that's her last name. Tostado, like the food. Yep. I love tostadas. Wow. Yeah, she's got a little Italian in her, a little Irish, ah! little, little something. I don't know. Ah! All I know is yesterday we took Western Kentucky, uh, plus six and a half. They got down 28 to nothing. Oof. And we put it out. We said, look, put a little money right now. They're plus 3,000. Put a nice. little pepper on it. If you just bet fifty dollars, you win fifteen hundred. And holy shit, Western Kentucky came back down twenty eight to nothing, tied that shit up thirty five all, and went to overtime one thirty eight thirty five. Baby, what was what was the what was plus three thousand? Was that the money line or on the spread? Money so, line, money okay. line, Johnny. Nice. Money line. Wow, and, uh, bro. Wow, you know I won my UFC parlay for five hundred dollars. Nice, nice. Yeah. So we, I mean, so uh, you going... only needed to pick one underdog to hit it, but I did it. It's like the second time in a couple of months I've hit a parlay. I'm I'm nice. stoked. I Dude, love it. MMA, it's the best. Guy. You're like me. I I love betting MMA. I bet all I do is I I look I find out who's the best wrestler. I bet them, and if their last name ends with like a a CK yeah. or an I, I don't care if who they're betting. If Bobby Bulpacek. Is fighting Carlos fucking Guerrero. I take well with check. If, I if respect kid, that. I, if a kid wrestled at University of Iowa and he's fighting a tenth degree jujitsu guy, I take the Iowa guy. Really, uh, it's it works. Jujitsu's uh, it's a it's a good thing. Ah, uh, yeah, man, super. No, but he's saying he takes the wrestler over the jujitsu. The wrestler, guy. I take the American wrestler, baby. Hell yeah! I, I don't know, dude. I like the jujitsu guys mostly because I'm learning to kill. Baby boy, they can't beat. Where did Elgermaine Sterling wrestle at? Cortland, come on! I'm an Elgermaine Sterling fan. I bet on him. December twenty eighth, we'll be live streaming from the Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium, where Miami University of Miami comes up to play. Rutgers. What do you mean you're live streaming? Explain this. You're just gonna hold your camera up the whole time. Oh, we're live streaming, man. We're fucking, we're going we're we're going to be going around interviewing uh, uh, alumni, coaches, everybody. We're going to find out who bet the uh, underdog. Who bet? Who the are they fans. playing again? Who's Miami playing? I missed that. Rutgers. Rutgers. Oh, there'll be a lot of Rutgers fans there, right? Yeah. There'll be a lot of. Believe it or not, there's a shitload of Miami people that live in uh, New York City. 
I there aren't any Miami, how, people, Miami people don't even go to their games down in Florida. Well, yeah, I, in New York City. Oh, really? I don't even know how the worst. Yeah, fans. they need a new stadium, Miami, all that shit. Dude. They have terrible fans that too. Well, Johnny, like, while we're terrible. talking, about- Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Here's the thing: anywhere where everybody is attractive and it's warm yeah. is shitty fans. Yeah, San Diego, Miami. You have to be like competing for a title to get them yeah. to show up because they can just go to the beach, spend no money, and yeah. just like it is so hard to sell a comedy ticket in Miami when you could just go to the beach and play Grand Theft Auto. You could just get in a car, run over a hooker, have a great fucking time. The peasants are smoke shows in fucking Miami. It's the best. So it's funny. the best. That's well, funny. speaking of, uh, the R- Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights, whoever the fuck they are. Uh, I think that's right. About the Red Sea, man. What about what's going on in the Red Sea right now? The Red Sea, Sam's favorite canal, the Suez Canal, where he brought that rocket scientist on that video. Did you just go from Scarlet Knights to Red Sea? Is yeah, that was that, that was you? crazy. I, I would respect you if you went Rick Patino, Red Storm, Red Sea. I thought that's what he was doing. Yeah, I thought yeah. he was talking about. Uh, By the Scarlet way, the Knights, the, the UNLV f- totally effed up by not hiring. Rick Pitino. Could they have gotten him, you think? 100%. I don't know. And by the way, my prediction here on Cash Daddies, even though it's not a sports show, I think within two years, most of your good Mountain West teams will be in the Pac-12. You think the Pac-12 will exist in a couple of years? They're going to go get all these giants. San Diego, Las Vegas. They're going to get all the, the, the best football teams that are on the West. They're going to get all. Do you think in basketball it will keep its its uh, major status as a conference for yeah, the tournament? Yeah, I think in football it will too. I don't know. Listen, back to the Red Sea. Okay, sorry, buddy. This affects the overall economy. Could affect the market to a point. A lot of it's factored in. But all these huge shipping companies like Maersk, Evergreen, they're holding up. They're not going through the Suez Canal, through the Red Sea, because these fucking, well, these hoodies, what, what what are these Iran-backed? Your hoodies? your girlfriend's cousins, we'll call them. Yeah, my girlfriend, your cousins, they're pirates. All they're doing is they're just attacking these ships. Oh, no, the Yemen, Yemen, Yemen. Yeah, That's no, exactly yeah. what's going on. Yemen, they're because of what Israel's doing to Palestine, yeah. is like teeing off on these Dude, I mean, dude, this Houthis. is going to be nuts. They're called Houthis. 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 The Houthis. Houthis. The Bahutas? The Houthis? Houthis. The Houthis. Yeah. The Bahutis so and the Houthis. 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 There's no B. Houthis and the blowfishes? That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, you got shipping and, you know, uh, you know, this shit does go through the Suez Canal. And, you know, here I'm going to state a fact, unlike that fucking clown that, that, uh, Santa hey, show. man, watch had, your mouth. He had great piercings. Watch, though, the GDP, whatever he said. Basically, watch your 12%, mouth. 12% of the world trade goes through the Suez Canal. And, you know, they've already diverted $35 billion in cargo. Um, and they're slowing things down. They're not going. They're taking the long route around. Take Africa. the long way home. Uh, but it's a, it's a problem right now. So. Do you guys you think know, that's my role on this show is just to sing show tunes to explain well, everything what you do when saying. you're not when you're not paying attention what you No, do, that's not true. I totally you, paid attention. You hear there. a word, you hear a word that you recognize as a word that has nothing, you know, in a phrase that has nothing to do with what the person's talking about and then you just say that phrase. Like, yeah, if if Howie's like I want to show you something, you're like I love show tunes. That, that's like that. Point. That's what you do. Well, that's your a- AIDS. Your a- I mean ADD. Uh, AIDS. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why you got you got to follow these pharmaceutical companies, man. Find oh, a real quick, company. happy birthday to Johnny, dude. Oh, thank happy you. Yes. Birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you. Five years old. Yeah, bro. yeah. Everybody thinks I'm 45 now because uh, Sam <laughs> tweeted that the other day. We go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Aaron, open your mind. <laughs> From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim Foyle hacks. Tim Foyle hacks.